A good morning and peace, brothers, sisters, and all. Um, today's class, and more importantly, all glory and honor and praise to the Heavenly Father through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, today's class is patience and temperance. Because let's get the definition of patience. Um, let's start with Christ. Let's get an idea of how important patience is. And not by opinion, not by a dictionary. Let's get the true meaning and significance of patience with a couple of scriptures according to the Bible. And we'll start there. And then by the Lord's grace, we'll go where he leads us. So let's start at um, Luke, the 21st chapter and the 19th verse. Okay. And let's start there. Because one of the most important aspects of patience is that it's beyond not, how you say, um, not getting provoked by a person. When we look in the scriptures, that's more ruling our spirit, um, temperance, discretion. And when we look at patience, it's more all-encompassing. So temperance would be included in patience, but let's see according to the Bible what exactly patience is. So we're at Luke, the 21st chapter, and the 19th verse. Okay, and it says, in your patience, possess ye your souls. So that's that already lets us know that patience is something that's very important, it's very heavy, it's very deep, it's very necessary. So we're seeing that this thing that the scriptures let us know, patience, and we've heard of it, but we may not have the understanding that we need of patience. Because when we have patience or acquire patience, that's how we possess our souls. That's how we basically preserve and protect our own life. Because our soul is our spirit. Death is when a, the soul or spirit departs from the body and returns onto the heavenly father that gave it to us that's ecclesiastes 12 and 7 so death is separation from between the body the flesh and our soul that keeps our body alive or gives life to a body so to possess that to protect it to to be able to continue with it, we have to have patience. Now, let's get another precept because anyone can give opinions, but to understand even the Bible minus any opinion, we must go precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. That allows us to rightly divide the word of truth, to take all these scriptures, which are precepts, and to link them together properly to divide one in the same chapter from another because the Bible is not a storybook. It's not a novel. It's the Lord's word set up like a puzzle. And true understanding is given to us and we'll know it and we'll be able to identify it when we link the scriptures together properly because the Bible explains itself. So even right now as an example of this is we're going to go on to Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12. Because what we're seeing is that patience is absolutely important. Because by patience, we possess our souls. And this is the master Christ. This is the only rabbi, which is Jesus Christ, that's telling us this. So now let's go to Revelation 14 and verse 12. Okay. And make sure you have a Bible. Um, if not, go online and look up the 1611 King James Version Bible and read along with that. Or pause and study because stop following men. We all have to know the Bible for ourselves. And to many people, the Bible might be confusing. But by us having that hope and that patience and that temperance, we're not going to look at the Bible as something big and confusing. We're going to begin to understand that the reason why the Bible is big and looks confusing is because many people don't trust in the Lord. So when we try to come to the Bible or the Most High's word with lies and with false doctrines, then of course the Bible is going to be confusing. 
But when we truly join to the Lord, when we pray to him for understanding, the Bible all of a sudden begins to make sense. We start to look at the history of the scriptures and we see what things we're supposed to do, what things we're not supposed to do. The things the righteous did, we're supposed to follow and do. The, thing, the things wicked men said and did, we're not supposed to do. That's why the Lord gave us the Bible, so that we can have patience and hope and understanding. Um, that's in agreement to Romans chapter 15, verse 4. So Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12. And it says, here is the patience of the saints. So now the scriptures is, are about to give us the definition of patience biblically. And also what Christ was saying that we just read in Luke 21, verse 19. Okay, and it says, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So when we look at what patience truly means, patience is when we actually apply the scriptures or do the Lord's word, because the Lord's word are just commandments. So throughout the Bible, there are the Lord's commandments, starting with the commandments that are found in the Old Testament. They are not done away with. Even in the last book of the Bible, we're still reminded and still define righteousness and patience by keeping the Lord's commandments, keeping the commandments of God. So stop following the lies in Christianity or religions or Israelite religions that say the New Testament is false. We need to stop following men and all these lies and only follow the Lord. Let God be true and every man a liar. That we can be justified in our sayings and overcome when we are judged. So as we're reading, the definition of patience is keeping the commandments and having faith in Christ. So having faith in Christ doesn't now eliminate the commandments, nor does following Torah eliminate Christ. Because you have so many people that are following men and therefore stumble at the word or fall short of truth. So, but by the Bible, the Lord's words, which are truth, we start to understand more about Christ himself, who was the word made flesh, all the way back in Psalms 40 and 7. And we also see, plain and simple, that the commandments of the Lord are still applicable. So, yes, we do not sacrifice animals anymore. We're not supposed to give tithes or the increase of the land to priests, which is what tithes are. Tithes was never money. So it's the tenth part of what the land brought forth, such as animals, herbs, vegetables, anything that would be food. That's what tithes were given. Ten percent of that was given. When you read in Leviticus, the 27th chapter, the 30th to the 32nd verse. Money is not tithes. And tithes were given to the ancient Israelites of the tribe of Levi. According to the law, they're not to be given to brothers that call themselves Levi or so-called Haitians or whatever tribe a man claims to be from. They are not to be given to Christians because they're, first of all, they're teaching lies and idolatry. So you're not supposed to support anything like that, much less pay them when the scriptures, even the actual ancient Levites didn't accept money and weren't allowed to. Okay, so again, the more that we actually learn the Bible, that's how we truly show patience. That's how we have faith in Jesus. And that's how we also keep the commandments and avoid idolatry. And we don't put Christianity or churches or doctrines of men above the creator and his word, which is another form of idolatry. OK, because that's following our own lust. That's following what we learned and believe, which is another example of lust. Lust isn't just sexual. Lust is a wicked desire, like covetousness, a wicked desire. So if I want to put something that's a lie and convert it to truth, now I'm not only an idolater, but I'm also sinning. That's why the Lord said, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. When we read in Isaiah, the fifth chapter and the 20th verse. So again, just bringing out the points clearly, but we're still staying in the same subject. 
And the subject is patience. And one of the things that we're reading here in Revelation 14, verse 12, is verifying infallibly and proving that patience is not only supremely important, it's very vital. It's critical. And also that it is defined in the Bible as us having faith in, in Christ and keeping the commandments of the Heavenly Father. Because again, you, we can't deviate from the Bible. Everything we do, we must have a biblical foundation and proof of it. And when you look at whether it's Israelite religions or you look at Christianity or you look at people that just do what they feel is best, that's where the problem comes. Because that's an example of losing patience. So people might be very, um, how you say, uh, very uh, quiet. Or they don't get upset for anything. So people are like, oh, and that person has a lot of patience. We, well, again, biblically, the patience that the Heavenly Father requires of us or what following him brings forth in us is not just limited to not getting upset when we're provoked. Okay, let's get, um, let's get James, the first chapter, and the second verse. And also, we're, gonna, we're using the 1611 King James Version Bible. Because if we were to use the King James Version Bible, like most people do, then the original wouldn't be the 1611 King James Version Bible with books that were removed from it by wicked men in power that have no right or justification to touch or tamper with the Lord's word or revise it like they do. The Bible was translated and it was prophesied to be translated in Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 11. The Heavenly Father in Hebrew through the prophet Isaiah prophesied that his word would be spoken in another tongue. It would be recorded and documented, preserved also in another tongue. So therefore, when we read the Bible and we see the proof of the prophecies, we don't need to try to retranslate the Bible, kill ourselves to study Hebrew. The Lord gave us the Bible in English or any language that we speak. But we also have to be aware of revised Bibles because Satan is going to do his job. His job is to intend to deceive. When we actually learn the Bible, we'll make sure that the Lord will teach us by his word and guide us and lead us away from deception and lies. As opposed to us being our own guide or doing what we feel is best. And let's get um, in the 1611 King James, which I'm reading from right now. Um, let's get. Um, Ecclesiasticus 20 verse 32 because again when we're dealing with the Heavenly Father it's it's so important that we don't lean on our own understanding because many things that we've learned including the definition of words many people come with that mind frame or that sort of way of thinking to the Lord so whether they have a lot of questions or confusion or pride or have learned things that aren't act, that are inaccurate they're still going to try to define the lord with that way of thinking that's why the scriptures show us that we have to humble ourselves as a little child and convert we have to completely change in the ways that we think the ways that we understand the how we comprehend things because many people may read the bible but yet they don't believe in the lord so how am i going to learn about the lord or pray to him for understanding of his word if i don't believe in him Without faith, it's impossible to please him. That which is not of faith is sin. So if I don't even believe that he exists, that's the first thing I'm, I need to work on. So, or a person obviously needs to work on. So I have to really look, we have to look at ourselves and come to the Bible as the Lord's children so we could hear and understand the words of our father, which is not being done in Christianity. It's not being done in Israelite religions, any of them. Because the Lord didn't give us religion. We can't call the Christians liars as we're learning that we're Israelites and learning that the Heavenly Father and Christ are black men like us. And then come and still change change from Christianity. Christianity is a lie, but then now we're doing the same prideful and wicked elements and idolatrous practices and holding people to churches and temples and places of worship that Christians do. In other words, we can't do the works of liars, but because we Israelites do it or because we do it differently or give it different labels, that it's something right. Again, we're departing from patience. We're giving heed to doctrines of devils. 
because there are a lot of Israelite devils in case brothers are so eager to follow false doctrines that they hear they don't realize that the reason why we're destroyed isn't because of Esau the white man we're destroyed because we have yet to repent the Lord warned us with curses in Deuteronomy the 28th chapter Leviticus the 26th chapter Christ himself prophesied of these curses being fulfilled when we read in Luke chapter 21 verse 24 he spoke of the slavery of the true Israelites even in these latter times while the Gentiles would be in their glory and their times to rule were not yet fulfilled we would be cast out of our land and be brought captive among all nations which was fulfilled in the 14 the fourth late 1400s starting with the Renaissance from 1453 approximately up until right now today wherever we are as the true Israelites we're oppressed and destroyed so again it's about us actually learning what the scriptures say and coming to our father as his humble children we can't come as children which are ignorant based on the ways we live and the things that we do and the way our family life is the way our women are out of order the way our lives are the way our men are out of order the way the children are out of order we can't come to the Lord and his word as if we're righteous and we already know when we're quoting Christian doctrines and lies mixed with scriptures that are not even correct so this is Ecclesiasticus chapter 20 and verse 32 okay so let's get that um, necessary patience in seeking the Lord so again here's that word patience so it's not limited to just us not losing it or getting frustrated obviously that's an aspect of it and that's included but again we're dealing with the overall aspect of patience we're dealing with how important patience is and to see it from like like people like to um you know use terms like micro and macro like micro would be smaller and granular more detailed macro would be the big picture same thing here when we're dealing with the Lord we have to deal with him in a in as the creator of all things then when we get into scriptures or precepts we get the detail of all things one by one or piece by piece so if even your perception of the big picture is wrong how are you ever gonna follow the Lord if you don't even understand or don't even apply the two greatest commandments for example how are you even going to get into the scriptures that show us the details of how to apply the two greatest commandments with our parents or with our family or with strangers? Because so many people live falsely and in lies and in hypocrisy and then they come to the Bible like they already know it. That's why the Lord said he resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Because we are going to go to the Lord and do what he says, not come to him as if we already know or come to him with the counsel and lies of Christianity or men and then now try to interpret his word based in the foundation of men we're gonna clear all those lies and foundations and use Christ as our rock and our only foundation and Christ and Christianity are not the same they're complete opposites when you begin to actually learn the word of truth Christianity was made up of men it's religion it's a lie it's of men Christ is truth. He was sent to the Heavenly Father. They are not the same. So let's continue. Ecclesiasticus 20 and 32. Necessary patience in seeking the Lord is better than he that leadeth his life without a guide. So again, holding and dealing with patience, we're getting more precepts now. So patience, we're seeing that when we have patience, the Lord is actually going to be our guide. And it's necessary for us to have that patience where we're going to always defer to the Lord's word, not defer to what our thoughts tell us, not defer to our reasoning or our deductive reasoning. Because what deductive reasoning means like basically a logical way to come to a conclusion. People, because we don't know the Lord, we have our own thoughts. A lot of people don't believe in the Lord because maybe they had a tragedy in their family. Or they don't believe in the Lord because they say, well, if there is a God, how does he allow babies to die? And then to them, that's it. And then a conversation later or a couple of days later or Sunday in their church, they're going to be sitting there trying to dictate to people 
you know, about the Lord and how you change. Well, they, they still haven't changed. They still have pride. They're trying to speak as an authority on things they have not yet even applied or learned. That's why the Lord shows us that we old wine doesn't go into new wine doesn't go into old bottles. We have to learn the word of truth. It doesn't exist in this world. This word, this world is void of truth. It's full of darkness and not light. Anything you do besides the Lord's word is a lie and it's not light. Taking the Lord's word and mixing it with Christianity still is darkness. It's not light. That's where Satan comes in, that deceiving and deception. Like he did with Christ himself. He came to Christ and quoted the scriptures. But what was he doing? Twisting the scriptures, seeking to use the scriptures to pervert judgment and to cause Christ to be deceived in sin. But Christ saw through his lies and deception because he actually did the word. He actually lived the word as an example to us. So Christ stayed in the same Bible that Satan was quoting and twisting, but he used the same righteous word to eliminate the lies and bring forth righteous understanding and truth by the same Bible. So many people, they leave the Bible, whether they realize it or not, some of them intentionally do and come up with the, um, the what is it, um, the Bible dictionaries or books of men. They go on a scavenger hunt trying to find books that are mentioned in the Bible, but the Lord didn't preserve in the book of the Lord. If he wanted us to learn about Enoch, no man could take Enoch away from the Lord or make it disappear. So the fact it's not in the book of the Lord is a giant king size clue that the Lord, he didn't choose to preserve that particular prophet. And the things that we need to know about righteous Enoch are already in the Bible. Just like Christ's works. Christ did billions and trillions of miracles so much that if we recorded all Christ's miracles in books this planet earth wouldn't be able to hold the books everything he did was a miracle and miraculous and unbelievable but we have what we need to know even of righteous Christ himself from the Old Testament from the prophets and from the disciples that actually recorded his works by eyewitness account so again that's why we have to have a guide we need we need to base our righteous direction, our decisions, what we teach our children, how we have virtue as a man overlooking, overseeing his household, ruling your house well. It's not by what we think or what is a accepted practice in a church that we attend or what we see as Israelite men. Yeah, well, you know, brothers are out of order. So now we're going to go to the other extreme and now be a tyrant in our house. So it's, it's, it's about us definitely being strong and standing firm with the Lord. But it doesn't mean when I say a tyrant, doesn't, you know, some, some brothers that are supposed to be in the scriptures, they beat their women. Or they resort to threatening their wife rather than guiding them. They resort to frustration and anger rather than wisdom and not giving place to those spirits that are tempting them maybe through their wife. Or if they have a wife that actually has understanding, instead of listening to something that she may say that's sound doctrine and agreement to scriptures, they're now going to stumble at the word and sit there and debate an issue that's not applicable at that moment. So now let's continue. Um, so let's go to James, the first chapter in the second verse. Because again, when when we're dealing with serving the Lord, it's important that we apply the commandments because when the commandments, it's not a vague term, like serve the Lord, apply the commandments, fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of men. That's in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. That's very powerful because all the, the whole Bible, are basically the Lord's commandments, period. Anything the Lord says is something we have to take heed to and do. Whether he says thou shalt not, or he says, take heed. Oh, he didn't say, thou shalt take heed. So it's not a commandment. That's We have to come out of that thinking. And he, the Lord's word is perfect and it's true. And it's for our benefit. The Lord knows all things already. So he mercifully has given us access to understand. To understand how to be a righteous man. How to be a righteous woman. How to raise children. How to deal righteously in this present evil world that he's allowing to be a temptation to see if we will love him or not. 
And so many people, they get seduced by this world. They're, they're sitting there voting for men and vote for Christ. What are you doing voting for men? Did the disciples hurry up and, and get to the get their their um ballots into the Senate race in ancient Rome? No. Why? Because their focus was on the Lord and his world, his righteousness, and which is the world to come, which is the kingdom of heaven, which is going to be here on the earth and it actually exists. So many people, they even in reading a, a term that seems obvious, like patience, even a child understands patience, the, the word in theory. But when we deal with the Bible, we're seeing by precepts, not opinions, that patience basically is us dealing with the trials that we're going through, yet still serving the Lord, doing as Christ did, having his mind. Even when we're tempted or we're doing the right things, like not following Christmas, like not succumbing to the homosexuality or the wickedness in this world. Even if loved ones are being seduced by Satan to do different types of lust and sins, we're not sitting there getting rocks to stone someone or being foolish or being emotional. We're still applying the scriptures with them, yet we're still letting them know and know in certain terms that homosexuality is unrighteous. And to serve the Lord, that's one of the things we must put away. We must change that way of thinking or being. We cannot be a homosexual and serve Christ. Even if you go to a church that claims differently. Even if from the peer pressure of this wicked world, many people that are Christians or many people that have no understanding of the Lord, they fall, they, 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 their faith wavers because they never really were founded in Christ. Their faith came from Christianity, which is of the world also. So once the world shifts from bringing homosexuality to the forefront and out of the closet, Christianity is going to follow right along because they've never been founded on top of the Lord to be able to guide and bring light to those that may be in darkness or may have issues that need to be resolved. Okay, so now from here, let's continue because let's go to Proverbs, the second chapter, because again, one of the main things that we see in this world is sin. Sin against the Heavenly Father and sin towards one another. Because the more, the more that the economy gets bad, the more people get desperate for money, what do you see? A woman's currency in this wicked world is her body. She doesn't have to go to school. She doesn't even have to try. She just needs to wear something revealing or let men know that she's offering to satisfy their lust. And that's where the scriptures speak about the commandments of God. Let's get one real quick. Let's get Proverbs, uh, let's get Deuteronomy 23. We're going to get Proverbs, the second chapter, in a second, Lord willing, but let's get Deuteronomy, um, the 23rd chapter. Because a lot of a lot of women deal in escorts, a lot of women, the, the tougher it gets here in America or anywhere. This was always, that's why they call it the oldest profession, because Again, you don't, a woman doesn't even need to know what she's doing sexually, which it's, it's, it's sad, but it shows you how a society deteriorates when it doesn't follow the Lord's commandments. That's why the scriptures say, um, sin is a reproach to any nation or any people. So the more that the nations of the world and even these different countries in the world continue to depart more and more from the Lord by being seduced by Satan and Christianity without even realizing it, they're giving, they're breaking all the commandments that they don't know or they don't care to know. The same commandments that the scriptures say, this is the patience of the saints, the true saints, the true chosen of the Lord, the ones that will be saved of the elect of Israel. And the, the Israelites, when you read the Bible, are not the people impostering and calling themselves Jews and Hebrews in the land of Israel in 2014 or since the late um, 1800s and that have basically annexed that land with America and also um, Britain and other countries, other European countries. When we read in the Bible, the Lord lets us know that those are not the biblical Israelites. And once you start to read the Bible, you see that how can you deny Christ, who is the Bible, who is the Torah, who is the law, who is the word, 
It was prophesied from Genesis, Genesis 49 and 10 through 12. Christ is the whole Bible. Every prophet prophesied about Christ. Yet anyone, including the imposter Jews that would say he's not the Messiah, showing you he was some prophet, he was some man, that's showing you that they have absolutely no truth and nothing to do with Christ. And the Bible, because the Lord said in Isaiah the second chapter and Micah the fourth chapter, when the true Israelites are in the land of Israel, then the world will not learn war anymore. The world has only gotten more violent. Because we're still in the last day's prophecies. When Israelites are put in the land, that'll be called the kingdom of heaven. The world will not be this violent cesspool of evil that it is right now. America will not be ruling the world. The world will get will be following the, the nation of Israel in the land of Israel. And the Lord's laws will go forth of Zion, which is Israel. That's not happening today. They're following America. They're not only just following English, they're speaking America's English. They're using American money, regardless of what they want to say, which money has more value, which currency, the Deutsche Mark says, who cares? We, is the whole earth paying people in Deutsche Marks? No, they're not. They're taking their Deutsche Marks to the bank and paying in English money, just like the scriptures prophesy that this whole world will be following Babylon. Latter-day Babylon, which is America, the second Babylon. Not ancient Babylon, this new Babylon that Revelation spoke about in a future tense. Revelation was written around 96 AD, approximately. So almost 2,000 years ago, centuries after ancient Babylon was destroyed, the Lord prophesied through John the Revelator that a new Babylon, Babylon the Great, this second Babylon would come, which is America and who the world follows. So the point is, is that the more that we read the scriptures, we see that America and this world follow sin. That's what they establish, that's what they promote. That's why they promote homosexuality or actually bring stiff judgments to people to even do anything or say anything verbally against homosexuals. A celebrated athlete who is like a, an idol, a god on earth, which is more blasphemy and idolatry. These men know not to say anything against homosexuality because they they may not stay, they may not protect the homeless or or people that are indigent or that need help, but homosexuals that have authority and power in this wicked world definitely say something against them or speak the scriptures even. If a person doesn't have true understanding and know how to bring forth the word blamelessly, they're gonna they're gonna fall. So. Again, that's why we have to know these scriptures. We have to pray to the Lord to teach us, to open our minds to have true understanding, to deal in spirit and truth. Because if we don't, we're going to continue to suffer or cave in to the pressures and the temptations in our families, in this wicked world, even in our households, as opposed to following the Lord and establishing righteousness and ruling our house as well. Okay. So um, one of the things, again, one of the many sins, especially including sexual sins, is many women, because of the lust of men or the lust that continues to increase in this wicked world, many women can just put themselves out there basically to give sex for money. And these are commandments that the Lord shows us because now what's happening? You have family members that will look and say, well, she's the prettiest. She's one of five daughters or, or ten nieces. And they'll say, okay, well, she's the one that will get us the most money. So let's get her tricking. Let's put her in Craigslist. These are things that people don't talk about. Or you see a couple of cousins and brothers you ain't seen in a while, and they're talking, yeah, what's up? Merry Christmas, Happy Thanksgiving, and all this baloney. More idolatry. And then nobody actually sees why the, the niece isn't there or she's withdrawn. Because her same father that molested her has her tricking in the street, breaking the commandments. And following options that if they knew the Bible, they wouldn't do. They would turn to the Lord and pray to him for money or pray to him for help. And the Lord would open up a righteous way, even in this wicked world, for them to get money or be self-sufficient. The Lord would protect them. See and look, who has ever prayed to the Lord and was confounded? David said in Psalms 37, 24 and 25, 
I've been young and now I'm old, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken or recede begging bread. But when you look at our people, the true Israelites, the so-called blacks, the so-called um, Latinos or so-called Hispanics, the indigenous people in the Americas, so we can be clear, and our scattered brethren. So you have the slaves in the Americas and in Europe and throughout the earth when we were bought and sold, starting during the time of the Renaissance. And, it, and we're still in oppression that our forefathers suffered today because we're the stubborn Israelites that the Lord forewarned. That if we broke his commandments, including not following Christ, that he would punish us and put us in oppression under our enemies. When you read in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter and Leviticus, the 26th chapter that were quoted to you earlier. And throughout the Bible, because many people read and stumble at the word or try to fit the fake Jews and the imposter Jews from the land of Israel into these curses. Yeah, you know, they, yeah, the Jews are like blacks. They suffer. No, they're not. When we read in Daniel, the ninth chapter, the 12th and the 13th verse, as it was written in the law, no one has suffered under the whole heaven and uh, were afflicted like those, the, the true people of Jerusalem, the true Israelites, which is us. You have people in Jerusalem today, the world recognizes Israelites. They rule the earth. They get to take lands that are not theirs. They oppress people. They control all the media, all the information that goes out to people, libraries, everything and anything they control. Technology, they, they, everything they're in power of. That's opposite. The Lord said his people would be poor. They would be the tail and the other nations would be the head. We would be on the bottom. Everyone else on the planet Earth would be on the top. So that's speaking about the true Israelites. That's not speaking about so-called Jews. And again, this is saying truth. This isn't an attack against anyone. But that's a way to deflect truth, to do smoke and mirrors. Oh, you're, uh, what do they call it? Um, you're anti-Semitic. That's foolishness. Many people came from Shem or one of the, when, some of the times when you refer to some words in Greek, you go from Shem to Sem. So that's how you get the term Semitic instead of Shemitic. Many people came from um, Noah's son Shem. Not just Caucasians that call themselves Jews. The, the true Israelites are also uh, Shemitic. The so-called Arabs are also Shemitic. There are many nations on the earth that are not the true Israelites that are Shemitic. And then imposter Jews don't get to say people are anti-Semitic. You're, you're a lie. You're anti-truth. Anti-Christ. You're against truth. So, again, these are things that the more that we learn the scriptures, everything starts to become clear. Even in a world that's basically clouded and, and darkened from truth, we start to point by point, scripture by scripture, we start to see light because this the bible is the only book on this planet that contains the heavenly father's word and is pure it's the only every even this wicked world tries to find truth and purity by coming back to the bible the laws of men if any of them are good they have a they have a a route back to the bible and again these are things that we have to learn and many people, they try to speak about the Lord without learning these things. So it's time for us to truly repent and truly have that self-control where even our thoughts may not want to recognize that a person may have a college degree or they may even teach theology at a university. They have to have the humility to truly find the Lord and acknowledge that we don't know anything if it's contrary to the Bible. So that requires us to start to learn the Bible or actually hear the word when it's brought forth to you by the Lord's Spirit in truth. And many people, that's something they don't want to do as always. Make sure you're not among those people. And make sure when we start reading some of these commandments or quoting them, you, you search them out and you continue to add to your learning. So this is uh, Deuteronomy, the 23rd chapter. And the 17th verse, because I quoted a couple of things. I had spoken against homosexuality based on what the scripture said. I don't go around looking to single people out. You are homosexual, you are homosexual, because ultimately those are very powerful, seducing, wicked spirits. And each homosexual is different. A person might be a homosexual because they were raped by family members. Or they may never have had love 
and then the person that treated them nice is a homosexual. So without having the Lord's understanding of the Bible or not truly being taught the Bible by their parents, Christianity isn't going to overcome those type of temptations that tug at a person's emotions or tug at their feelings. So that's why Christ, especially to adults, he was always telling us to be born again, to renew our minds. The disciples, same thing, repent, be born again, become a new creature, renew the spirit of your mind, because the ways that we function and think are corrupted by this wicked world. They're contaminated by our own family members, whether intentionally or without knowing better themselves. So now that we're learning better, part of actually learning about the Lord is first learning about Christ. Of all the things we need to know, especially people that may feel that they are Christians or they already follow um, Christ and refer to him in Hebrew, Yahawashai, Yahushua, Yeshua, we all still have to learn Christ. None of us, I, there's many things that the Lord mercifully helps me to understand every day. The things that I'm teaching by the Lord's grace, I know and understand, so I'm sharing it by his spirit. But every day, even about these things, the Lord gives more and more understanding. That's why we always have to grow. Many people stop growing because they think they know when they don't. So that stops your own progress. That stops you from being fruitful like we're commanded to be. So part of being fruitful is understanding these things because many people might read the scripture we're about to read and don't realize that they're still giving place to Satan. Let's continue so some of these points can be not only proven, but can continue to add to your learning, Lord willing. Deuteronomy 23, 17. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Zion. So when the scripture in this verse says there shall be no whore, it's referring to a woman that's a whore in a homosexual way. Let me keep reading so you can understand, even if you don't know Hebrew or you don't search the scriptures that diligently as yet, in context, it's going to confirm what I'm saying, that it's not an opinion. So thou, there shall be no whore of the daughters of Zion. So when when we read, let me get this because I do have a note here. Yeah, the the word that's here is Kwadasha. Some people might say it's Kodasha, or try to pronounce it. I'm not here to teach Hebrew. I'm just here to show that there's letters in Hebrew, and those words very possibly say Kodasha. So again, this isn't a Hebrew lesson. What it is is to let you know the word that was translated into the English and is whore. It's whore, but it's not just oh she's a prostitute or or she's a slut. It's it's dealing more specifically in relation to uh, lesbianism. OK, and let's let, let's read the latter part, which will bring that out clearly. It says, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. So the scripture is actually dealing with a. we just read a male homosexual. And the first part is dealing more with a female homosexual. And this is not opinion. Let me just read the 18th verse so you can be very clear on this. It says, thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore. So again. The 18th verse has a different word, which is um, zana. So even though in English both say the word whore, the scriptures in context let us know, even in English, that they're not speaking of the same thing. The Lord isn't repeating himself from the 17th verse to the 18th verse. One is relating to a woman that basically deals in, in prostitution, but in a, in, in a homosexual way. So the Lord is covering all loopholes because many people, especially in sin, we're deceived by Satan. Our lusts make us justify things. Well, I need money. Well, I, I need to support my kid. Well, being a lesbian isn't actually as bad because, you know, homosexuality, that's disgusting or dealing with men having sex with men. But women, it's more tender. Like a lot of men, they're repulsed by homosexual men. And by following a shameless nation in this wicked world, you have many people that think it's sexy or cute or, or, or something that's acceptable to be uh, lesbians. So you have wicked men that like seeing women kiss or, or deal sexually because this is a devilish, wicked world that's against the Lord's commandments. So what happens is you have a lot of our people that are seduced by this wicked world. So when you go to a nightclub, you have a lot of women that try to pretend like they're gay because they, they want to stimulate 
uh, uh, peak a man's interest because they know they'll get more attention if guys see them kind of like wild and oh man she go with girls and guys ooh that's sexy oh man I like that I love a threesome so instead of them coming out of this world you have a lot of these women that never learned anything about the Bible and Christianity they are seduced by this world without even realizing it because they don't even know some of these commandments or they may think they know them in theory but they've actually never read them to like how the Lord say convert our soul the law of the Lord is perfect converting the soul when we read in Psalms chapter 19 and verse um, 7 so again when we when we speak about the Lord's Word the beauty of it is that it converts our soul because there's many things in our minds that are wrong. Many men, or they justify being a homosexual in jail because there are no women around. A man got needs, what's he going to do in jail? Hey, I'm going to relieve myself. No, that's, we, whether, when we're in temptation, whether it's temptation to us or temptations that anyone would relate to, we still have to be righteous. We still have to have the true patience that the scriptures speak about of the saints which is to keep the Lord's commandments and have faith in Christ. Yes, no one is perfect, but we can't just always fall back on that, especially when it comes to major sins that the Lord destroyed people for. He destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, giving a perpetual and eternal example of when you do that sin, the end result will be. That's a that's a perpetual sort of sign that, hey, this is what happens to homosexuals and lesbians. Don't do it. He condemned Sodom with an overthrow. That's powerful. He condemned five cities, not one, not just Sodom and two, not just two cities, Sodom and Gomorrah. He destroyed all the cities that were given to that wickedness and sin and that lust. There's always excuses. Many men, because they start to despise women, oh, women, they don't, they're not real. They, they come with their own excuses. Instead of finding a good woman and praying to the Lord for one, they give heed to seducing spirits. Women, they maybe didn't have a good baby daddy, or they're tired of men trying to rule and control them. So they go to a woman that rules and controls them. What are you, what are you doing? It's confusion. But when we come to the Lord, our mind gets clear. His laws help us to convert our souls because he literally sends Christ to write his laws in our mind and our hearts and purify our minds from the lies and, and the corruption that we breathe and see and experience every moment of every day. Everything in this world is nothing about abomination, including the way that they claim to worship the Lord. Even their fake marriages, everything they do has nothing to do with the Bible. The people of the world are just like Christians. They follow Christmas, Easter. They get married the same exact way in the same fake churches. They, they, they condemn homosexuality to one of their relatives are homosexual. Then all of a sudden now they cave in. No. You still have a love for people, but you, no matter who it is, if it's your own mother, like the Lord says in Deuteronomy, the 13th chapter, when it comes to idolatry or any sin, we don't cave in because people that we love this got weak through a sin or are following their lust. We don't go pick up stones and stone them because the Lord, he brings the judgment now. During grace, we have a time to, we have a chance to repent in these last days. So the Lord's judgment of the Old Testament law through Christ, the Lord, the Lord stays his hand or having men bring those judgments so that there's no room for repentance. Now we have room for repentance. That doesn't mean we stay in sin or we leave the Lord's word and follow the world and do what we think is best. Nobody's perfect. What the hell does that mean? Nobody's perfect. And the scriptures speak about hell in Matthew 10, 28. The word hell means grave. So don't let your mind wander. The word hell doesn't mean some, it's not a curse word. It's not some, something evil. The word hell means grave or affliction up to and including death. Learn the Bible before you start trying to judge things that you don't know or you get distracted by things when you're not clear. That's where Satan comes in. That's why how we block Satan is by staying in the word. He even came in Christ. He even tried to, to twist Christ's understanding in mind. But 
when we stay in the word as Christ did, that prevents us from following pride, Satan, what we think, what we feel is best to the best of our ability. It prevents all that baloney. And then we become perfect as the Lord is perfect. Yes, it doesn't happen overnight. But day by day, the more that we learn and we constantly every day, all the time, put off different things that we did or different things that we do, different thoughts, we fight against them. That's how we continue to grow in the Lord and so that we can become perfect in word, commandment by commandment, word by word, precept by precept. Till eventually, as the Lord continues to add to us, we offend less and offend less and offend less. Or in other words, sin less. We break his commandments less and less and less. So as we're reading here, you know, just to bring out the point again, that not only are we not supposed to be homosexual, and this is the Lord's commandment, or a lesbian, because you have people that don't know the Bible, so they go to one or two scriptures that don't say the word lesbian, like this scripture shows sodomitis, a female homosexual. That's where the word whore, when it says, there shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, again, the scripture that's there is, quite a, the, the word that's there that was translated for the word whore, it's letting us know it's a it's a it's a female it's a like a a homosexual female that's given to whoredom that'll basically do whatever anyone does she you know like like in other words sisters that are strippers today they may get more money from females that like women that's these are these are the things so a sister's not thinking well I'm not a lesbian you know I won't go home with her but she's letting a woman touch her and caress her like, as if that woman's a man or if that's her man. No, that's wickedness, regardless of why you do it. Because again, and a lot of women that are thinking these type of things will eventually become strippers because they'll get desperate, not realizing that they're already breaking that commandment. That's why Christ said in Matthew's, the, the fifth chapter, the 27th and the 28th verse, Christ said that basically he gave us the clue that sin Breaking the Lord's commandments begin in the mind. So not only are the Lord's commandments not done away with, but they're so spiritual that we break the commandments when we start to give heed to sinning in our minds. So that in the example that Christ gave about adultery, when you look at another man's woman to lust after her, to desire her sexually and dress her with your mind, your, or, or dress her in your mind, you're already committing adultery in your heart. How do we know that? The thoughts of sin, the thoughts of wickedness is sin because what's going to happen to a man if he is constantly desiring to have sex with a specific other man's woman or he doesn't think, he thinks in terms of what your man got to do with me, what's going to happen when he has opportunity? He's going to show great hatred for his brother, for that woman and open himself onto some strong, fierce judgments of the Lord by having sex with another man's woman or attempting to have sex with another man's woman, or raping another man's woman. Because again, when we give place to Satan, we can't stop how far we're led. That's why the scriptures speak about the deceitfulness of sin, because you, a person might start off hanging around with you know, people that are lesbians, or gay. Oh, they're so funny, they're, okay, cool, all right. So not only are you not correcting them, but you're actually being enticed by them. You're not winning them over like Christ would and showing them a better way and them coming to Christ in sincerity and humility and putting off their acts. They're, they're bringing you into the fold. You're not even seeing it. They're seeing it. You're not seeing it. Six months later, you're sitting there rubbing up with some other woman. Or you're a guy that's now wearing clothing or behaving in a way that a, a man of the Lord cannot. So these, again, are things that we have to repent. And again, this doesn't, these commandments are still the same. If, Lord forbid, my mother became a lesbian or homosexual, or if my mother is an idolater, I can't say, oh, no, well, Christianity isn't that bad. Jehovah's Witnesses there, well, you know, judge not that you be not judged. Nobody's perfect. I cannot say that. We can't, we, we can't now, like how you say, um, we can't rest judgment. We can't like how you call it like um we can't decline from judgment because now it's close to home 
or now it's somebody, you know, your wife or a woman you love or, you know, it's, it's, it's my kids. It's my it's my grandmother. I love, you know, no, we we have to have pure judgment. We can't have respect of persons. We can't deal in fear. We have to fear the Lord. We can't fear what how people are going to receive hearing his word. Or us being an example of truth. Now, if people don't want to hear it. We don't have to force feed them because that's their choice. We don't we, we don't need to make an enemy when somebody's already not going to like the light in us. We don't have to force that process because we can't force someone to hear or receive the Lord's word anyway. We have to be examples of it and also walk in wisdom. And part of that wisdom is having temperance and discretion, because a lot of people, when they start to learn these scriptures, now they're going to where they know homosexuals are, where they know people that break the commandments outwardly are, and now they're blasting them with the word. And that's not that's not why the Lord gives us his commandments. He gives us his commandments so we can first learn and apply it. And then the things that we're learning and doing, that we share them with others. That we don't sit there yelling at people and then we're still breaking his commandment because we don't have discretion or temperance. Or true patience, we're still sinning. You know, you got someone beating his wife at home and not supporting his own kids. And he's trying to tell people not to be homosexuals. He's trying to tell people that they need to get their house in order. Well, put away the, the gay men's magazines or, you know, go in, go in the men's strip clubs late at night as a man or whatever you're doing. Get your house in order. Get Fight those lusts and fix yourself so you can see clearly to help your brothers and sisters. Because then you won't be railing at people. You won't be trying to be holier than thou. You'll actually feed people and, and help them. And, and nurture them because you're going to be correcting them out of love. You want to see better for them. You want to plant a righteous seed. You're not sitting there trying to debate with them or show them that us Israelites are better than everybody else. You're going to walk as an example. Your words are going to show people that you're worthy to listen to or that the Lord has blessed you to be wise and to be endued with knowledge. Okay. So now as we're reading, let's read that last part again. It says, thou shalt not bring the price um, of a, uh, thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore. So the scriptures are showing us that, you know, we're not supposed to, we're not supposed to be evil where you have people that, you know, they they exploit women. They don't give it a second thought. They might see a young woman or a, an older woman or a woman that's really well built. They see a woman that's got a body. And because prostitution is, is legal in certain states or they go to other countries and it's not really an issue, they go to... Thailand, the Philippines, they go to Brazil, they go to, you know, Costa Rica, they go to countries all over this wicked world and exploit women because in their poverty, many women are deceived by their lust. Well, they want the nice things they see on TV or they see in their countries or they see in American TV. They want those nice cars and nice plush apartments. So they say, well, um, you know, you got to sacrifice. You know, you want anything good, you got to work hard for it. Well, the Lord doesn't want us to work hard on our back for the sisters or the women that are being seduced by these temptations. And even if you get good money and you have a nice place, what are you going to give in exchange for your soul? You, you get those things through sin, so it's only going to bring problems and suffering. The strippers that are dead because they either said, you know, they either flirted with men and then the men followed them home or beat them violently. Or the woman that have a pimp that's some selfish psychopath that beats them half to death or maimed them or blinded them or murdered them and left their children motherless. She, she had a lot of things to say, too. The Lord has the final word. That's why we want to put ourselves in a position where the Lord watches over us and protects us and gives us the things that we need, the sustenance, the food, the clothes. He's going to give us those things when we truly serve him. But he's going to give us what we need. We want to go with what the Lord knows. We want to, we want to live how he knows we're supposed to live, not try to go above what we're to have because our lust is guiding us. And love and money will do anything for it. That's, that's a deceit that Satan also uses. The love of money is the root of all evil. That's 
that's a way, that's a slippery way that Satan tricks people into breaking the Lord's commandments. And because many of them don't know the commandments or to them following the commandments is Christianity, which it is not, they continue to be deceived by Satan and Satan's wicked world. And therefore don't have patience. They don't have self-control or temperance because they get frustrated instead of getting wiser and stronger and putting themselves in a position where they don't have to suffer as much. They try to get a quick fix. They have no, no, no patience, no true patience. So the second Satan comes with a wicked option from their friend, cousin, mother, or someone else coming at them in a pimp way, they go for it. And then now what? They're making themselves a whore. They're doing things that, sadly, it's, it's getting worse and worse and worse. You look at, especially now, a lot of these younger sisters or women that don't have good guidance at home or ran away from home. So they, they had problems at home or they had problems with a stepdad or someone that molested them or raped them, which is horrific. They are looking for love, not only in all the wrong places, but this world is full of wolves. Christ warned us, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. So you have all these devils and wicked men, especially of our people, that are cutthroat, selfish devils. Evil men, evil women. So now they take these 13, 12, 15, 11, 18, these young women that are completely lost and just looking for someone to give a damn about them. They don't even know what that looks like. And these people see them coming from a mile away and then exploit them and what? Turn them into whores and prostitutes. So they've already been raped, so they already have a low self-esteem. So they actually, wicked pimps and wicked people, they look for those type of people because they're easy prey. They've never had love, so they, they just want to belong. They just want someone to care about them. They want someone to be at their funeral shedding a tear. So people, wicked, demonic people use that against them. And they're going to pay. But make sure that you avoid them and stay away from them. And the way we do that is by being able to identify these things, by turning to the Lord. It's never too late to turn to the Lord as long as we're alive. But we can't think having some cross on our neck is how you turn to the Lord. You look at many people that are in wickedness, including pimps. They have that cross showing you it's a bunch of garbage. It's part of the idolatry and wickedness that we follow. Because if it wasn't, first of all, the Lord said he's not worshipped with men's hands. Anything that men make, anything we can see physically, whether it's a church, whether it's a building, whether it's a cross, whether it's a man in a cross, whether it's a man's picture or supposed to be Jesus Christ when it's not, that's an idol. That white image of Christ that everyone follows is an idol. That's not Jesus Christ. He's a black man, according to Revelation chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. Instead of contending with it, actually search the scriptures like righteous people do so you can learn. Instead of continuing to follow the picture you have in your car or in your pocketbook or on your dashboard, a lot of you brothers that are so-called Puerto Rican and so-called Dominican, a lot of Spanish-speaking brothers follow these idols. Be an example to your family to do the right thing of change, of being an example, not continuing in the darkness because it's what you've always done. The Lord is merciful. Don't keep testing his mercy by staying in sin now that you're learning some of these things that are wrong and you can now verify them. Daniel chapter 10, verse 5 and 6. The Bible doesn't speak about Christ being a man of color or a brown-skinned man or a black man in just one place. Truth is found everywhere in the Bible. You just have to now learn where to look. And don't think of it as something evil. He looks like you. He, we come from him. A lot of you act like, you know, we're telling you he's blonde and blue eyes, like the false image that's put in the earth. Or that's established and set up falsely to represent a lie and deceive people into thinking that's Jesus Christ. So let's get um, another scripture because... Again, this is something that's such a burning shame and sad that even when you look at Haiti, for example, when Haiti had that earthquake um, a few years ago, first of all, the Lord is the one that brings earthquakes and judgment. And his judgment and anger is fierce against our people. So even if he's beat us down and we're poor and we're suffering, like our brothers and sisters in Haiti, the Israelite brothers and sisters in Haiti, the Lord still continues to punish them because they follow punishment with more sins. Instead of saying, wow, you know, we're doing voodoo, we're doing Catholicism firmly, 
and the Lord is horse whipping us. We're in a hell that no one could even imagine. They were even labeled hell people by the French, Hades, uh, Haitian. So again, instead of us looking at the conditions we live in or the mockery that we are in this earth and the ways that we suffer, yet thinking and acting like we know, when our living conditions show that the Lord is not with us or blessing us. Our people sit there and after the earthquake in Haiti, instead of them saying, wow, let's repent. You know what? We must be angering the creator to suffer like this. You listen to more lies, more deceit. See, it was a tremor and a fault that no one knew. They sit and follow that baloney. When the fault or whatever it was, the heavenly father created. There's faults all over the earth. How come they didn't have an earthquake like Haiti? Because the Most High said there'll be earthquakes in diverse places in these last days. And, he, and one of the ways he moves in power is to bring earthquakes and hurricanes and tornadoes in this earth. When you read in Isaiah, the 29th chapter and the 6th verse. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 6. The Lord, every single earthquake, small or great, comes from the Lord. Okay? Any hurricane, there's no Hurricane Irene or Hurricane Andrew or Hurricane Katrina. Those also, any storms or tempests, small or great, destructive or that um, feeds or nur nurtures and nourishes the land, those come from the Lord also. The same Lord that did the flood. The flood isn't a fake story. It's actual history that happened. So if he brought the flood, you don't have a hurricane that's not the Lord. Well, that's the devil. Well, where was the devil in the, in, in the flood? That was the devil too, where it says the Lord? No, it was the Lord. So it's time for people to wake up and understand the Lord is all powerful. And these are things that we have to learn about our Father. How are we going to pray, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name? And we don't know him. We don't obey his word. If we know him, we're going to keep his commandments. 1 John chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. He that says, I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So it's time to learn the Lord's word, learn his commandments and do it, and stop following this lies in Christianity. Or stop talking, wearing some stupid demonic idol of a cross, and then you're sitting there prostituting your own daughter, or your own niece, or your own little sister, or your own little cousin, or your friend, or some girl that you met as a stranger. Acting like being a pimp is something good. Look at this devilish world we live in. You got people singing songs about being a pimp. You're a monster exploiting a destroyed young woman. A woman that was probably raped by a father. You know that. That's what you're hoping to hear. You talk to her, yeah, how you doing? What's up? Man, you must, you out here on the street, you young. It must be hard, huh? And she's a set. She hopes, she wanted, she wants someone to sympathize with her. So she's gonna tell you more things than she should, right? At first, she's a child. Or she's a woman that just wants someone to love her. Or treat her like a human being, not a piece of meat. Yeah, you know, my father, my stepfather, he raped me. Then my uncle raped me. And, you know, yeah. Wow, yeah, man. Oh, that's tough. I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah, one of my sisters went like that. Yeah. Next thing you know, he's got on the street corner later that night with a black eye. So, again, let's get Leviticus 19 and verse 29. And it says, do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. So you have men, especially a lot of wicked brothers that were in Haiti, Israelite brothers, the wicked men that were in Haiti, a lot of them started prostituting. A lot of these children became orphans, motherless and fatherless, because their whole family died. They were the only one that was small and managed to find a little crevice for seven, eight days, six days, three days with no water, no food and sweltering heat in Haiti. So here, some of their uncles and aunts survived. And instead of being a father or, or, or protecting these children that are five, six, eight years old, they made prostitutes out of them. So men would pay to have sex with these little girls that are five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 years old, 12 years old, that have lost their whole family, no sympathy or love. And how they got a hold of this child to devour her some more is because their family members were giving them money were, were giving their child or their niece or their family member or this stranger's child to a, a wicked dog, a devil, a friggin' vile predator to have sex with a child and then pay somebody for that. So he's not just a child rapist. 
he's actually paying. He's he's no, he's dealing with a prostitute, so he's not vile. He, so, and these are the people that walk among our people, the majority of our people. Find a woman, find a a, a a young woman or any woman among our people that hasn't been molested. That's the minority. And here, the Lord has shown us that a father is supposed to be protecting his daughter, not molesting her, not raping her, and in this case, not providing her getting his income from her. So you want to get money. You're not going to go work and support your family. You're going to destroy your daughter's soul and make her bring you money or your niece's soul who doesn't have parents or you're entrusted in her custody. Or while you talk about you're going to take it to the amusement park or something like that, you have men coming over your house in Tennessee or wherever you live and having sex with this little girl. So it's showing you for something like that to work. Look at the wicked. Look at how much wickedness is happening among our people. The men that would do something like that or the men in the street that would go have sex with a woman that's been destroyed or is being forced to prostitute herself. So again, by us reading the scriptures, we need to read these laws. The same laws that lying Christians say are done away with. We need to read these laws. We need to convert because the same hypocrites in those churches are doing the same things. They're not just lusting. They're actually doing these wicked works. They're not fighting the wicked thoughts. They're accepting them because they think nobody's perfect. Whatever sin I do, nobody's perfect. Well, what scripture is that? Christ said in Matthew 5, 48, be perfect as your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. The law in, what is it, uh, Deuteronomy 18 and 13, be perfect as your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. That's what Christ was quoting anyway. So instead of our people doing that, every time they sin or smoke cigarettes, every sin they do that's wicked or they're lesbians or they, they dishonor and disrespect their husband, dishonor and curse their parents, any, any wickedness they do, nobody's perfect. Yes, nobody's perfect. So we're supposed to repent. That's, we're supposed to change from that. Not according to Christian doctrine, but according to the Lord's word and doctrine. Because he's the judge. Christian preachers and stuff, they try to judge people, but they're going to be judged by the Lord also. So we can't keep following man because they're going to have to appear before the judgment seat of Christ, just like we do when we die. And those that don't die before judgment day, we're going to have to, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess to Jesus Christ, not the Christian church, not an Israelite religion, not an Israelite group. They're going to be weeping and gnashing their teeth. They're going to be terrified for the wickedness they've done, and they're going to be judged for it. You following them are going to make you, you this is for our soul. You, you got to stand for your own life. No one's going to answer for you. You have to answer for yourself. Therefore, be diligent about your life. Be diligent about what you do. Answer to the Lord only. Learn his word. Don't sit there and put your soul on the line based on what you heard from men. That's why the scriptures say, cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm. Whose heart departeth from the Lord? Because once we trust in man, once we make man be our strength, make, make, make flesh our arm. That make man our strength. All that's going to happen is we're departing from the Lord. Understand, even the righteous always led the people to the Lord. Pray to the Lord. Have faith in the Lord. Worship the Lord. Stop doing what you're doing and worship the Lord this way. They didn't say, come follow me. Let's go open a church. Now we're Christians. Now I'm the bishop. I'm this and that. No. Christ exalted Peter. And Peter himself made himself equal with men because he understood that Christ told them all, you're brethren. So even though Christ made Peter the head of the church, the church means the people, it doesn't mean a physical building or a physical place of worship. You're the temple of God. Know you not that you're the temple of God. The Lord's temple is, stop following, stop stumbling at the scriptures. There's never, the church of the Lord is his people. It's always been. He dwells among his people. He doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. So don't stumble at the word. Understand the big picture or the little picture. The Lord doesn't dwell in temples. He's not where you go to worship him on any Sunday. The Sabbath is Saturday. And those of you that go to Israelite religions, he's not there either. We are, he's with us 24-7. How are you going to someplace to find the Lord when heaven and earth can't contain him? 
In other words, he's with you all the time. When you worship him correctly, that's when he's with us. Not by you being, calling yourself by some group name or being a member in a group or a church or whatever. So, again, by us keeping the Lord's commandments, by us having true patience, that's when the Lord is going to dwell with us. That's when he's going to save us. That's when he's going to protect us and watch over us. So, let's read this last verse again. It says, do not, this is Leviticus 19 verse 29. Because we were kind of dealing with one of the Lord's commandments. One of the ways that people need to repent or acknowledge these type of sins and then forsake these sins. Whether you're being a prostitute or whether you're being prostituted. And a lot of sisters that are prostitutes, they came to Christ because Christ showed them that they're able to repent. They knew he was speaking truth. When they hear his word today, they know it's true. So no one's telling you to feel bad or you're nothing. That's just the opposite. You've probably been through a lot. And even if you didn't before you were a prostitute, you definitely have now. That's why it's time to repent. It's time to acknowledge and forsake your sins. And you sisters sitting there gossiping or speaking about different things, it's time for you to repent in the sense that you may have a cousin you know that's a prostitute. And you don't talk about it. You don't want to be seen with her because now you're starting to try to quote wise sayings. Well, show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. No, a true friend is going to be there for their cousin or their sister or their aunt that's lost or their little sister or a stranger. That's how you show true love. That's the Christianity that you try to speak about. But every time you're in a situation to show love, you never do because Christianity isn't what the Lord gave us. Christ is what the Lord gave us. And if he's our true Lord, if he is the son of the heavenly father, if he is the son of the Lord, then what are we going to do? His words and follow his example. So again, so you don't get it twisted. These scriptures are coming out not to sit here and bring down a prostitute or vex them or make them hurt or make them feel more ashamed. We're supposed to feel ashamed when we break the Lord's commandments. Whether we meant to, whether we didn't know a better way, now that you're learning Christ is the way and he's the best way. And stay far away from Christianity and all their idols and their crosses. A cross isn't going to help you. Doing this after you do a sin is not going to help you. But acknowledging and forsaking our sins, truly repenting, that's what's going to help us. And learning these commandments. So Leviticus 19 verse 29, do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore lest the land fall to whoredom and the land become full of wickedness. And that's what's happening today. So the world is becoming so wicked from the free sex or the way that people live and dress, especially women, that when you walk down the street or you go out in the evening and women are walking to a club or they're going downtown and there's clubs and bars, you can't tell the prostitutes are dressed more modestly than the women going to clubs. Think about what I'm saying. You have some women that are prostitutes that will just wear a hoodie or, and it's just the neighborhood they are, they are in. You know, or some of them might would try to wear enticing clothes, you know, micro mini skirts or things like that, which, again, they're not supposed to do. But these are things that many of the sisters, by the way they live and how you see them, they don't know these things yet. That's why the Lord is raising up true teachers to help our brothers and sisters that want to turn from these sins. That don't, that realize something in their heart lets them know I shouldn't be a pimp. They're not going to sit there and justify it and smoke a blunt and boast about how many holes they have in their stable. They're going to sit there and be troubled and be like, you know, I just, just don't feel right. You know, I don't want to seem weak, but, you know, their conscience, there's something there. Or hearing this word of truth will stimulate the little virtue that's in them that needs to grow and come out. So, again, the Lord is showing us that in a place like America is a good example or Europe where you have whoredom or you have women that are selling their body or that's something that's legal or accepted or it's illegal, but no one really does anything about it. What happens is men, instead of looking at a woman as something to treasure or someone to love or someone to build a family with, men will just bounce from woman to woman. So the same attention women seek, they don't understand the damage spiritually and the sins and how their sins add to men's sins. And it just brings nothing but sin and wickedness and whoredom in the lands and here on the earth. And then what do you have? Now, wicked men become more wicked, like the Lord said, because iniquity shall abound. The love of many shall wax cold. 
So because iniquity is sin, because breaking the Lord's commandments is growing and increasing more and more each day, the love of many shall wax cold. Instead of somebody taking care of a little earthquake victim that survived in Haiti and all her family died and she got a little tattered doll, they're going to say, aha, we got, oh man, we're going to make some money. We got her. She can't run to nobody. She can't hide. We'll threaten her. We'll beat her, soften her up a little bit. And she already is broken hearted. So we got her. That's the perfect victim. I thank the Lord that we found somebody so we won't be broke again. And they have their little crosses too. They, they call themselves Catholics and Christians. So again, that's why we have to come out of this world and this world's way of thinking and apply the patience of the Lord, which is to keep these type of commandments so that we don't continue in homosexuality. We don't continue um, exploiting children or doing, you know, molesting children. You got this child molester sitting in your wicked church with the other priests that a child molesters. And they're all sitting there clapping and praying to the Lord. It's a mockery. Why do you think the Lord causes these places to be destroyed by tornadoes? So your idolaters and then now you got sinners there. So you're all sinners. So no one talks about nothing. Half the people in there know he's suspicious of it. He been he coming out of the girl's room late, late at nights when, when the cousins sleep over for the weekend. And the mother, nobody says nothing. And if the kid comes and says something, you make the kid feel like the uh, doubly victimized because you call them a liar and you, you shame the kid some more. And don't believe them. And then they end up going to wicked men and becoming a prostitute and just becoming more and more damaged and destroyed because they were never healed and nurtured like they should have. And if you know that your, uh, what do you call it, your, um, your boyfriend or something like that molested your kid, get his butt arrested. Put his butt in jail. That's what the, that's what these, even the people in power, they're set up by the Lord in the sense that, yes, they're not going to be bringing forth righteousness, but the Lord is going to make sure that society has some sort of order so that men can't go around doing something that whether you have the Bible or not, that's grotesque and wicked. And without the Lord, we won't have true judgment. We're going to respect persons. We're going to fear the face of men. Let's let's stick on this subject briefly. Um, let's go to another law, Deuteronomy. The same law as people claim that are done away with is all that the New Testament talks about. So if you do, if you if you do, if you claim these laws are not real or we're not supposed to keep them anymore, or they're real but they're in the past, those are for the ancient Israelites. First of all, you are the Israelites. We are the Israelites. And second of all, it's because of us continuing to break these same laws and not following Christ. That's why the Lord continues to have us oppressed and destroyed, and suffering racism. So. Deuteronomy 1, verse 16. So again, when we read these laws, we have to understand what they're saying, and they always show us righteousness. So even if we don't have the ancient priest anymore, we should have no priest. Christ is our only priest. But anything that we read is wisdom and righteousness, but we have to learn about Christ. We have to learn what to do with all this information in the Bible. And it comes from us ha starting and growing a new mind and becoming a new person, being born again, not getting dunked in some water, but actually becoming washed and having our conscience cleansed, sprinkled, like it says in Hebrews 10 and 22. Having our mind cleansed because you can get your, wa your body washed all you want. Homosexuals have bathhouses. Child molesting priests are dunking people in water. So... That lets us know that these people have nothing to do with righteousness or nothing to do with truth. The disciples were never dunked in water. How were they baptized from heaven like John the Baptist was, who also wasn't dunked in water? It's time for you to actually learn the Bible instead of trying to fit the Bible into the lies you've learned in Christianity or the lies you learn in these Israelite groups today in Israelite religions. So this is Deuteronomy 1. Verse 16, because again, a lot of mothers, instead of protecting their daughters from child molesters, or instead of protecting their children from predators, they lean on their own understanding and they sin horribly. And again, that's because they're Christians, because if they actually knew the Lord's word like they Christianity claims to teach and they claim to know, they wouldn't make these fatal errors. They wouldn't make an error that stains their soul. You have a daughter and your understanding is putting her in the hands of a 
pedophile or to voluntarily decide that you're gonna the family will be better off if she goes into prostitution I, I know sisters that I've spoken to numerous times that their mother or their family is telling them basically you know you're beautiful you know you don't have a college degree so you you know you better get your butt to work and you better you know post on Craigslist or you better you know post in these other wicked websites the mother is having arguments with the daughter that she's not being she's not willing to work like she's lazy <laughs> because she doesn't want to be a prostitute so she works at McDonald's or she might work at a uh, Burger King or you know uh, you know cleaning uh, uh, cleaning rooms at a hotel and the mother is vexed with her about that instead of commending her as saying look you know you don't want to lose your soul because my 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 aunt used to do that and she was found murdered or what, whatever other personal issues that people ignore so they can go for the money in sin money itself is not a sin it's the root of all the love of money is the root of all evil not money is the root of all evil the love of money is the root of all evil first um, Timothy 6 verse 10 but you could also read the whole chapter because it really gets into detail so again we have to truly follow the Lord we have to truly repent and see things his way because again I I don't want to go off the subject because the scripture I was going to read is Deuteronomy 1 verse 16 and 17 which basically shows us the necessity of following the Lord no matter what not fearing even if wicked men in authority are against the Lord and what we're gonna say and do and also to hear the small as well as the great because you may have a, a father or the stepfather that the family may look at as an authority or great or they're more ahead of a household and then you may have the daughter she might be playful or she might lie from time to time you don't sit there and just accept what the father or the stepfather says when there's an accusation like child molesting so obviously you have to hear both sides you don't just accuse the man because it's such a heinous accusation but at the same time you don't reject it because it's something that would destroy the family or you already no shoot it's hard to get a man shoot that nobody's perfect nobody's perfect well the lord puts people to death for less and you couldn't possibly be a worse mother than letting your child get molested or giving them to a camp or giving them to a church or giving them to a priest or giving them in the hands of people that would violate them. So that's why the scriptures show us to keep a sure watch over your daughters, also your children, especially as this world is getting more and more wicked. Every day you see you have for Penn State a, a year or two ago, you had some one of the most vilest men that, you know, was sitting there and admitted to molesting 60 70 80 kids like people were coming out he was one of he's one of the few people that had that many molestations there wasn't a catholic priest and here because they're as wicked as he is but yet people still blindly follow these lies or follow men or accept wicked men until they're exposed so you had these children that were molested hundreds of times or brutally violently raping these little boys that would go to these football camps because they want to go to Penn State or they see these football players on TV and they want to be a part of that again where your brains at and it's it's about you looking at yourself don't now hate the word or hate me or hate well you know I'm not perfect no it's, it's not about you defending yourself it's about you acknowledging hey I love my child and I failed as miserably as possible. I have to ask the Lord to forgive me. Then I have to ask my child to forgive me. And then I have to be a better parent and learn this word that will show me how to do that. And pray to the Lord for forgiveness every day because children are destroyed their whole life through from these type of things. And hopefully the Lord strengthens my child so that they can do the impossible and recover from this type of situation. And through him I can. You don't leave a scandal or your uncle or your cousin raping your son or daughter and then now you bring them to a Catholic church to get violated by some other weirdos or some other liars some other hypocrites some secret devils that you should see and you can't 
until you grow in the Lord and you can see in with true eyes and 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 what's evil and what's good. So again, the scriptures show us to hear the small as well as the great. And that's really what it boils down to. That well, I'm here, I might as well read it. So this is Deuteronomy 1 and 16. It says, And I charge your judges at that time, saying, Hear the causes between your brethren, and judge righteously between every man and his brother, and the stranger that is with him. So whether the accusation is one of your children's neighborhood friends and your brother or your uncle or whoever, you don't take the side of a family member. If there's, like I said, an accusation of great wickedness or someone saying this person stole and they say they didn't, you don't just assume that your family, the people you love the most or want to believe the most are right. And this, the Lord even though we don't have those, these type of righteous judges today, the Lord's standard still has to be followed. These commandments are still applicable because even if we're going to deal with the Lord, we also have to judge righteous judgment. Like Christ said uh, in John 7, 24, judge not by outward appearance, judge righteous judgment. So he didn't do away with these laws. He came to show us exactly just even if you're not overseeing a big trial, you still have to judge righteously. And not according to man's laws in a jury trial. We have to judge according to the Heavenly Father's laws in a small situation. If it's a contention between two kids who said they didn't spill the grape juice on the floor. We all, oh, I can't stand this. I can't stand my nephew. I know my son didn't do that. No, you, you make sure you hear both sides. Throw up a prayer to the Lord who saw what happened to find out because kids are going to spill things. The more dangerous thing in that situation is lying. That's the part that gets people more sinful and more prone to destruction. So you, even in simple things, the, the key is you don't want them to lie. So again, when we deal with anything dealing with judgment, even if you hear people coming to you with gossip, Ooh, guess what happened? You stop them there. Look, if, if there's something that they did wrong, you know, talk to them. Don't come tell me about their sexual relationship or that he's he he's he creeps on the down low or something. If he's a homosexual, you that's your brother, that's your cousin. You should talk to them. Don't come gossiping to me or what are you doing? You're supposed to correct them, but people don't have this wisdom. And these are the things that cause violence. These are the things that cause people two years later. Spread no worse rumor about them. Now it's going to get violent. When they're the ones that initiated it by gossiping and tail bearing like the Lord commands us not to do. And this is the reality of everyday life. The same Bible people reject and say it's old fashioned. Truth is timeless. The Lord's laws are timeless. They're eternal. They're his word. They're not separate from his word. They're a part of his word and all his word deals with giving us instruction reproof showing us right from wrong regardless of what we were taught or what we think and that's the patience we need to apply because we get in situations where a, a father that's a preacher he might come telling you something different than the lord says that's when you have to have the patience to stay firm and follow the lord regardless of what people say and do regardless of if everyone's against you not following Christmas, you still have to not follow Christmas because in Jeremiah, the 10th chapter and throughout the Bible, the Lord shows us to not follow the customs of the people that they're worthless and vain and wicked. And the Lord commands us against taking a tree and cutting it out of forest, putting it in our house, fastening it so it can stand up and decking it with silver and gold. We can't do it, even though our mother's doing it, even though our grandmother's doing it, even though she died December 25th and we all come together to have a memorial of her. That's not what we're supposed to do. That's their thoughts. That's our feelings. It's not the scriptures. And those are the type of ways that Satan will come at us and put it in someone's mind. Hey, let's have a memorial. So now he, he guarantee everybody's going to be there. But when we when we let the commandments be our guide and our light, and have that necessary patience to serve the Lord no matter what, even in frustrating circumstances or circumstances beyond our control, we still are going to defer and default and follow the Lord. We're going to go back to what the Lord says, not what we feel, not what other people tell us to feel, nor what other people are doing. 
Deuteronomy 1 verse 17. You shall not respect persons in judgment, but you shall hear the small as well as the great. You shall not be afraid of the face of man, for the judgment is God's. And the cause that is too hard for you, bring it onto me and I will hear it. So we always have to remember that the judgment is God's because truth is of God. So a lot of people, they fear to bring forth truth for fear of reprisal or fear of payback or fear of offending people or fear of losing a friend or fear of offending a woman. Man, I can't speak. Her, her favorite cousin, he, man, he's floating around. He's real gay. I, he's, he's really homosexual. I can't say nothing or else. She, I know she, she about homosexual. She said she went to Pride Parade. She asked if I want to go. But I don't know, but I really like us. No, we have to be men of truth. So it doesn't mean now you have some brothers that battle like that. They'll come out roaring because they're afraid. So then out of fear, they'll react more like a chihuahua. They'll come out rrr, rrr, like barking and all buck wild. We can't be like that. We have to we have to have temperance. We have to have self-control and discretion or else our own weaknesses can pervert the word of the Lord. Because now you attack and oh, see, I can't stand homosexuals. God hates faggots. And now you're saying all these things that. The Lord doesn't give us the authority to say, nor does he say that in the scriptures. Whatever the Lord says, let him say it. Don't give your interpretation of it. Because if not, like the scripture says, let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. For anything else cometh of sin. You know, so we don't want to be add nor taken away from the Lord's word or put in our two cents because you want to show that you ain't going to, you ain't going to, depart from the Lord for a woman or your so now you might attack a person that is a Christian or they may be sinning and the Lord doesn't give us this wisdom to do so. You know, before a person learned the scriptures, they were more accepting of homosexuals because this society in this world, this wicked world leads us that way. So it's about us having true wisdom and understanding. It's not about Someone might be a homosexual. You might never bring it up because they already respect where you come from. They know if you talk about the Bible or the way that you are and that you, you're in a heterosexual relationship or you like women, they, they, don't, they, they, may not, they may not be able to overcome certain weaknesses or certain sins in them, but they understand more than you may think. They're still human beings, in other words. You know, some people that, well, he dresses up like a woman. Well, at the end of the day, our job is to apply the commandments with a person. Sometimes that includes rebuking or correcting. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it just means you show a person respect or you hear them. And when the right time comes, they'll come to you or the Lord will make it very clear that this is the time to maybe give them some scriptures or something on a subject that's challenging to them, like outward homosexuality. But again, there's a time to stand for truth and there's a time, there's a time to speak and a time to be silent. And the time to speak isn't every time you see a homosexual to go into homosexual scriptures. You may need to go into healing scriptures because maybe because they were raped by three men, they became homosexual. Or they went to jail and now they became, they were turned out or something. So again, it's, it's, it's really important to deal with each person individually. And that takes being spiritual and actual having wisdom. And praying to the Lord the moment that you're dealing with a person, praying silently. So even if they're looking at you, they don't know you're praying. But you're letting the Lord, you're letting him bring his spirit into the conversation and the situation. You're letting him open your mind and speaking through you rather than you, you're going to stand up for truth. And then like Christians, everything is turned the other cheek because they have no wisdom. It's a very big Bible with a lot of different precepts aside from the good precept of turning the other cheek. There's a time for peace and a time for war. Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. So every, every situation doesn't command us to turn the other cheek. But when someone has no understanding, they have to try to oversimplify the Bible and make the whole Bible one scripture because they have no understanding of it. So, again, that's why we have to learn. Like a child, he might think, you know, he can teach people because now he's in school. Then he's taught, hey, you know, slow down. You're just starting to learn. Just like how the baby's starting to crawl, we don't take her outside running. Yeah, so you're just starting to learn in kindergarten. Slow down and continue to learn. Okay, yeah, he's a little kid. It makes sense. He's going to follow wise counsel. We have to be the same as adults and not think we already know.
because we'd be foolish as a kid trying to teach that doesn't know anything. So again, as we're reading, the Lord is showing us that when we're dealing in all things, and especially in judgment, that we have to hear the small, the victim, as well as the great, the person that might be in a high position like a Catholic priest or a family member that no one would. He has a wife. He has 12 grandkids. How could he do? We better hear it. And you never sit there and accuse the child. If the child is lying, then obviously you better find out why. As opposed to just stopping there and condemning a child because you never liked that kid anyway. You knew there was something wrong with that kid. No, we, someone else might have molested them and they, the person maybe threatened them. So they wanted to bring the situation to light in their young mind that doesn't know. That's why the scriptures, when we deal in the scriptures, the scriptures deal with great wisdom. Like with Solomon, who had patience for most of his life when he feared the Lord and he followed the word, which is Christ. What did he do? Solomon in first, uh, what is it? First Kings, the second chapter. I'm sorry, first Kings, the third chapter, first Kings, the fourth chapter. Um, King Solomon prayed to the Lord for wisdom, as he always did. And the Most High came to him in a dream and basically came to him in a vision, came to him in a dream and gave him whatever he desired. And because he only desired wisdom to righteously judge his brothers and sisters of Israel, the Lord said, because you prayed for something so good and so wise, I'm going to give you all the things you didn't pray for, along with what you prayed for. And then the next thing we read about Solomon is that you had two, a mother, two, two mothers came to Solomon. One of the, both of them had young babies about the same age, and one of the babies died. And the mother basically smothered the baby and it died. So essentially, the mother with the baby that died she's grieving or she's not all there, whatever her story was, she basically decided to lie and say that the other baby's her baby. So the, it wasn't discernible that it wasn't her baby. So they it was brought before Solomon because no one really knew how to deal with this type of matter. Both are, You have one word against the other. You can't look at the baby and say it's not one mother's or the other. And it's a serious situation. So they brought it to Solomon. And Solomon basically, by saying something that he technically would have the power to do, he threatened to put the baby to death and give a piece of the baby to each of them because none of them are admitting that the truth isn't being brought out. So the, the actual mother said, don't kill the baby, give it to the other woman. The woman was like, no, 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 kill the baby because it wasn't her baby. She didn't care. So... By being a righteous judge, hearing both sides, using the Lord's spirit and wisdom to guide him, Solomon was able to judge a situation that without the Lord, someone would have to either give their opinion. They wouldn't be able to show righteous judgment. So the same Old Testament that people claim are done away with is the wisdom that the Lord continues in the New Testament. They're not separate. They go together. So that's why we want to make sure that we deal in the Lord's word patiently. This gives us patience in situations that might be frustrating or you don't know what the truth is. Take a moment. You don't you don't have to judge right away. So in the example of child molestation that goes through our family, most of our families that don't want to know or they don't care. You're the ones who got a serial child molester in your family or several of them. That wicked spirit jumping around. So you're the ones that should be asking your daughters. Have you been molested? What's going on? You should be noticing if they're quiet or withdrawn or the, the symptoms of being raped or violated as a child or being touched or being dealt with in a sexual way that's wicked and inappropriate. And that the Lord tells us in the law, whether it's child molestation or any rape, the Lord says that sin is like death. Um, that sin is like murder. Let's get um, Deuteronomy. 22. Because again, these are the Lord's laws that are greater than any man's laws. Even if man tries to sort of extract precepts or parts of the Bible and mix it with their own laws, like the American government admits that they do. In the city of Cambridge, they basically say that God's laws are a model and then they basically expound in the Lord's laws. Like if they know more than the Lord, literally. 
It's in um, what is it? It's in uh, City Hall. It's in it's in one of the civic buildings, City Hall, in the city of Cambridge. An old building in the city of Cambridge, Massachusetts. They literally have it on their building that God's laws basically is a model of good, you know, right laws, and then they basically take it from there. They they have more understanding than the Creator, in other words. And people sit there and watch those engraved words and take pictures and are clueless to see the blasphemy and the pride and the arrogance of wicked men that stole a country that even today have that mind that they know more than the Lord, yet follow the hypocrisy of Christianity. So we have to come out of this world's thinking. We still have to live in the world, but we have to renew our mind and be transformed from this world's ways to the Lord's ways. Okay, so um, let's get, um, this is uh, Deuteronomy 22, and let's get right to the point, because again, these are laws that we have to be keeping or be aware of. So we have to be a just judge. So even though we're not a federal judge, we have to judge matters daily in our house. Got your daughters or your sons fighting, you got your neighbors or your aunts or different people or your cousins speaking things that they ought not. So again, it's so important that by us staying in the word that we don't get corrupt, but we it's a light to us. It'll always show us what to do in confusing moments or challenging situations. And people don't know what to do. Therefore, their lives are miserable. They're constantly not only sinning, but they're making the wrong decisions or speaking wickedness, which is also sin. So Deuteronomy 22 and verse 23. If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto an husband, and a man find her in the city and lie with her, then you shall bring them both out onto the gate of that city. And you shall stone them with stones that they die, the damsel because she cried not, being in the city, and the man because he hath humbled his neighbor's wife. So shalt thou put away evil from among you. So in a situation like you have a lot of women that creep or that, you know, you even have songs that are a couple of decades old, down with OPP, other other women's other men's property. Let me say it the decent way. And People, things that this world glorifies and people get platinum records for singing. The Lord shows us how wicked this is. That in when his judgments were being enforced, when we were in our land, in the land of Israel, he didn't allow whoredom to destroy our land. So he gave us these commandments so we would prevent the wicked world that we live in today. And a lot of people like to, oh, that's so brutal and violent. What kind of God would have people? That's why the Lord tells us not to lean on our own understanding. Because you have people that will justify two men getting married or giving a child to two women that are in a relationship, yet they're going to condemn what the Lord says, who's righteous, who's our creator. We have to follow him. We don't get to think for him. And he gives us the ability to reason. So the more that we renew our mind, we will see the difference between his ways that are beyond our thinking and the things that we see and, and live with every day. And we'll have to agree that he's right and that we're wrong, objectively. But we have to learn. We don't reason like him naturally. We have to learn of his ways, not conclude for him without knowing. So it says, so as we're reading, when a, when a woman has sex with a man, if it wasn't rape or she's playing hard to get and then he pushes the envelope and she go with it, and says no later, some BS like happens today. Women would know how to navigate in these situations. They wouldn't put themselves in a man's hotel room late at night. Absolutely, it doesn't give any man the, uh, how a woman's dressed or what she says or does. It doesn't give a man the right to rape her, no question. But when a child is taught these commandments, or when a woman is taught or a daughter thought, taught these commandments, they don't put themselves in situations that can be potentially dangerous or among men that don't know the Lord's word or will and would rape a woman if they're enticed or flirted with too much. So even though that man is wicked for raping a woman or taking it, 
a woman that's wise is not going to put herself in a situation to fail. That's the simple point. And the scriptures are showing us that if a woman is with other men, she doesn't get to cry wolf when she's busted or she doesn't get to like deny culpability or no, I didn't do nothing wrong. He forced himself on me. <laughs> well, you were wearing lingerie and, and you called his phone. No, like the Lord doesn't deal with lies. Everything gets exposed when we deal with his laws. Okay, Deuteronomy twenty-two twenty-five. But if a man if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field and the man force her and lie with her, then the man only that lay with her shall die. But unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. For as when a man riseth against his neighbor and slayeth him, even so is this matter. So it says, For he found her in the field, and the betrothed damsel cried, and there was none to save her. So betrothed meaning she has another man. So even though they're not in a sexual relationship at that point, she already has a man or is spoken for. So she can't be having other boyfriends or be seeing several guys. I'm talking to him. I'm dating him. I'm seeing this one. The Lord keeps all that foolishness out of there because that's only going to bring confusion and mind games. And that's the aspect of girl power that many women want. They don't want to be controlled by a man because they want to be able to flirt and deal with things with other men. When women say they don't want to be controlled by a man, they're not talking about they don't want a man to tell them they can't go to an African village and, um, you know, build a hospital. They're talking about you're going to tell me I can't go out or hang out with this girl or you don't like her or you think that this dude that's my ex just wants to have sex. A woman wants to be able to do whatever she wants. And unfortunately, as with Eve, when that happens, wickedness follows. And a virtuous woman, if she doesn't want to be controlled, is going to be by a wicked man that's not keeping the Lord's commandments. It's not going to be, oh, I don't want no man. To talk. She's going to have virtue. So that's why Christianity is successful in a wicked world because it, it's a part of this wicked world. And also it gives the illusion of serving the Lord when in actuality it's full of ungodliness. Like the scriptures say, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. So that's what Christianity is. It, it's satanic, so it deceives to give the illusion of being about God and Christ and about the Bible. But in reality, it's the perfect opposite of the Lord and of the Lord Christ and contradicts both of them. So... Um, Again, when we're, we're reading about rape, because it's tying into a lot of these sexual sins that predators, including parents and pimps and people, they, they bring about these type of horrific sufferings and exploitations on family members, on strangers, on people. And a lot of virtually, vir virtually all the strippers, virtually all the prostitutes, when you look at our women or even some of our young boys or, or young men that give in to these type of sins that are also male prostitutes and things like that. That's a soul that's been ravaged that usually comes at a young age when they were violated by an adult or someone they trusted or multiple times. So that's why we have to watch over our daughters and watch over our children. Let's go to um, Ecclesiasticus 42. Because again, these are all the Lord's commandments. This is all the word of the Lord, which is Christ. The Old Testament, the Apocrypha, and the New Testament. This is the book of the Lord. This isn't, well, these books are not um, canonical. You have all these foolish Christian terms. They've never been the Lord's authority. They were accepted and put there by wicked men in power to be like God's word on the earth. No, God already has his word, which is the Bible not traditions of men, which Christianity and any religion comes from. That's why their works, their history shows they have nothing to do with the Lord. Stealing countries, murdering natives, teaching false Id idols and lies and false images of Christ and setting up religions with million millions and billions in stolen jewels and money like they did in Mexico and every other country in the Americas. So those are not the works of the Lord's servants and true disciples plain and simple. And it's time that we start to judge and discern these things. 
or else the Lord will continue to punish us for following these idolatries and not coming out of them, especially now that the word of truth is here and it's being taught to you by the Lord's spirit, not by man. So this is Ecclesiasticus 42 and verse, um, let's start at verse 9. Okay, yes. So we were just reading about basically a man forcing himself in Deuteronomy 22, verse 25 to 27. Um, we were reading about, as opposed to voluntary adultery or a woman with a man having sex with another man, which is adultery, which is wickedness, the Lord shows us that, hey, um, if a man forces himself on a woman or a child or a male child, that is the same as murder. The judgment for that, the damage, the wickedness of that is the same identical wickedness as murder. Showing you how serious a crime that is. So you have men, old men, parents, uncles, strangers, neighbors that basically accost and approach a child as if they're they're okay their diabolical lust is okay and it's not and these are things that have to come out because these are the things that are these are one of the main things that are destroying our people before they even are getting started in life as a small child is an easy prey an easy victim and then the parents instead of they this is the worst mistake this is a blunder that's epic that happens in so many families or, or a lot of families with single mothers or a lot of families with parents that are distracted with money and other foolishness and their own arguing and problems that they don't pay attention to their children or the people around their children or the family members around their children. They're so glad to get rid of their kids and then what? Now the, the, the child is damaged severely. And they're the same one that's going to sit there and tell their child they got to find Jesus and they're slut and they this and that. You're an embarrassment. You're the embarrassment that left your child abandoned when they were a child and scar them and have the audacity to try to throw it back on the child like if you were a good parent and that's why we need humility because it takes a humble a true a, a person with some sort of a soul that has the potential to be better and improve to admit their guilt most parents won't admit it well how would i know that my brother would be like that the scriptures show us this is what the lord says so you can know and close your mouth and get away from christianity this is what the Bible said. This isn't what Christianity says. Ecclesiastes 42 and 9. The father waketh for the daughter when no man knoweth, and the care for her taketh away sleep. So whether you have a sleepover, first of all, you don't let your daughters go to every person's house. Let everyone else do that. They're the ones whose daughters are flashing their breasts in Mexico on spring break. Your daughter isn't going to be a part of this wicked world. She's not going to have the liberty other people have because you want the best for her. And the only way you can do that and truly guide her is by the Lord's commandments and words that we're reading now. So it said that the care, whether it's a father or I'm a single mother or if the father's in the home or the father's a single father, whatever the situation, the parent or the father, especially, he's going to be watching over his daughter. He's going to have a watchful eye. He's going to not sleep through the whole night. He's going to check at two in the morning because he know. oh, wait a minute, she started developing. She's hitting puberty. I noticed even some of my co-workers, I, you know, I went to pick up my daughter. She came to work with me. They are looking at her, looking at her body and stuff like that. Okay, she's not my little baby anymore. She's growing into a woman. That also comes now she's getting different attention. That's going to stir up different things in her. Does she like attention? Is she arrogant? You're gonna a, a wise man should be seeing that, not following the the rules of society or reading books about how to raise your teenage daughter. Madness like that. You're supposed to be in the scriptures or get into the scriptures if you've never been in them and get out of Christianity that's not teaching you these things. So again, what the Lord is showing us that when you really love a daughter, you're not gonna just be resting and relaxing. Even in the night, she might want to sneak out. She might be 13 and look like an 18 year old and, or a 22 year old and have a 22 year old man that wants to get with her, regardless of how old she is, because she looks older or he's just looking for an easy prey, looking to fulfill his lust or has an advantage over her that he wouldn't have over women in their 20s and 30s like him. So, again, that's why as a true man or a true father, you can't be a good father without applying these things.
You can in your own mind. That's why the scriptures say there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Proverbs 14 and 12. That also applies for a woman or a single mom or a mom with a uh, uh, different, how you say, um, a, a stepfather. Not every stepfather loves other men's children. That's why, again, he doesn't look at you want him. You want that to be his daughter. He's looking at that as just another booty. That's just another woman that looks better than her mother. That's younger and more ripe. You don't. There's some men that are not right. They, they, they are not what you want them to be. You have to see what really is. And the Lord is the one that can give us the understanding to see that he's the one that sees how everyone is. He knows their heart. He knows their soul. Whether they're disguised or they, they they can pretend they're not or they can deceive people from seeing who they really are. They can't deceive the Lord. That's why we want to always pray to the Lord to show us who a person is. And like the Lord said in Ecclesiasticus, the sixth chapter and the seventh verse, if thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first and be not hasty to credit him. So as a as a mom, as a father, whatever the situation, especially as a father, you're supposed to be watching over your daughter. Not expect her to be in her bed. You wake up in the middle of the night. You're tired. Set your alarm at midnight and get up and see if she's finishing her homework or studying for a test. Let her know that she she don't know your schedule. You, you're unpredictable. She know you get up at 7. You come home at 6. You go to bed at 9.30 or 10.09. What? Now Satan has an opportunity to take her young mind or deceivable mind and make her want to leave the house, which is dangerous because the dangers that she doesn't know that she thinks she knows are going to get you, you and the whole family in trouble. And she might not make it back alive or make it back not pregnant. So let's continue. It says, and even if she don't get pregnant, she's not supposed to be fornicating and being a wicked woman because the Lord punishes that too. So let's continue. It says, um, the father waketh for the daughter when no man knoweth, and the care for her taketh away sleep. When she is young, lest she pass away the flower of her age, and being married, lest she should be hated. So the scriptures speak about when a woman is not found a virgin by her man that marries her, or, or joins with her, which is marriage, not some wedding ceremony. The scriptures show us that she'll be hated because she's not found pure. So again, uh, that's in Deuteronomy 22, 13 through 21. So the scriptures are showing us that if you don't pay attention to your daughter and watch over her diligently, she's going to lose her virginity very quickly in a wicked way. And in some of these ways we see today, child molestation, raping children, all these things, especially for young girls. You could see clearly that this is no joke. This is this is an epidemic. Again, these are the things that none of our people talk. You got some sisters, everyone talking about she's so mad, she's so angry. Once you talk to them and, and, and deal with them in a civil way. Some of these sisters have been through horrific things. That's why they're so angry. No one wants to hear them, and then they just want to sit there and dump on her. Oh, she's so angry. Oh, man, she's a whore. Oh, she's a stripper. She's a... Of course she's going to be angry. It doesn't justify her being angry. She has to also know that anger rests in the bosom of fools. She has to get to the root of her anger so that she doesn't create more sins she was already sinned against. And if she doesn't deal righteously or deal with the, the, the pain or the grudging or all the issues that she rightfully has if she doesn't fix those things she's now going to be tempted and she's going to be sinning with all that rage and anger and that displaced anger or hating the stepdad that did all these things and he's sitting there cutting food with her at the dinner table she's going to want to cut him or now be tempted to she's not going to murder him but all she's going to do is gossip or lie or try to get him back in other ways and then satan got everybody now so that's why the scriptures show us being a parent is important because you can prevent these things. The Lord will protect you and your family, even in things you may not see, because you're doing more things. You're, you're diligent. 
when you're diligent about your family and they are your priority, not in word, but waking up in the middle of the night, checking on your daughters, not letting them go and come how they please. Who cares if they get upset? They'll be more upset when they're pregnant with a horrible man's baby and he leaves. They'll be more upset when they're 10, 10 minutes to live because some psychopath's raping them and then stabs them halfway in between. They'll be real upset then. Or they live and they're confined in a wheelchair. They, they'll wish you confined them in the house more and they didn't get to go to the mall late at night as if they was some group of some group of men that didn't have to worry about nothing. It takes one time for a woman to have damage that's irreparable. One rape, one psychopath seeing her that's physically stronger than her. Oh, you're just a little skinny man. Yeah, when he got when he got that lust and devil in him, he hit you in the head. You'll see you're a big six foot tall woman. You're gonna cave like a like wet paper. So the point is, as a father, as parents, monitor and control. Your, the comings and goings of your daughter. Don't be like the other people in this society. Don't be like the other people that give their children the liberty to come and go as they please. Yeah, in Christianity you do that, but with the Lord you can't. Because Christianity is not the Lord and it's not the Bible. Let's continue in the Bible. In her virginity, lest she should be defiled and gotten with child in her father's house. And having an husband lest she should misbehave herself. And when she is married, lest she should be barren. So what happens is when women are sitting there, now their parents don't know she had two miscarriages, she got a tattoo in a private part. She got a whole little separate life outside the home. And many people, they always speak about Christian or Catholic girls because they're notorious for having that like little fake innocence and then they're the town whore. They had many sexual relationships. They're sleeping with some other ladies, um, you know, baby daddy. She she got pregnant. She had a, an abortion. She, no, it's it's staggering to see the blindness, but that's inevitably inevitably what's going to happen because you have Satan overseeing your house and sin rather than applying these type of scriptures in diligence and not just blindly trusting your your daughter because she was always cute. So you love her. Hi baby, what are you doing? You trying to get a little pink clothes and she's 14 or 15 when she's sitting there sneaking out the house or saying she's going to the mall or sleeping over at a friend's house and doing all kind of madness, doing all kind of sexual sins. Being a lesbian or being bisexual, she's she's battling with that. You think that she's studying for a test, that's her biggest battle because that's what she told you. So it's time to wake up out of sleep because these are the things that destroy families. These are the things that destroy a child before they can make the right decisions. These are the things that destroy daughters, and then they're the stripper that you're ashamed of. All that liberty and all the all the dangers that come along with that, if they live. Verse 11, Ecclesiasticus 42, verse 11. Again, this is the 1611 King James Version Bible. It says, keep a sure watch over a shameless daughter. You see, a daughter likes to flirt. She's 11 years old. Her body isn't even developed. And even if it was, it doesn't matter. But she's really flirtatious with men. She want to sit in guys' lap. She's rubbing their shoulders. You see, she's she's not innocent friendly. She's You can see she's already 10 steps ahead of every other kid her age. Or she's she's a little fast. Like her father or her mother. Okay, or both. So... Even if you are that mother or father, you have to objectively, by learning the scriptures, realize, hey, these certain things are not appropriate. Even if everyone else in society does it, the Lord shows us, keep a sure watch over a shameless daughter. And a lot of you promote your daughter being shameless. A girl's not supposed to wear panties and, and bra in public. But you're so lost. And I say that not in an arrogant way. I say it in a true way, that without the Lord, any of us are so lost that we allow our young children or our wives or anybody to go in public or to a beach in bras and panties because they just change the name and call it a bikini. A bikini in many cases is more revealing than panties in a bra. Yet you promote your own daughter's shamelessness because that's the style or accepted wear and clothing in the United States or in other countries. And we're supposed to be separate from this world. That's why, again, Christianity is successful because you could talk about God and then follow the world. 
and you can't do both. You can't have two. You can't have two masters. You either follow the world or you follow the Lord. You either hate the world and follow the Lord, or you love the Lord and hate the world. You know, or what's the opposite? You're gonna follow this world and hate the Lord. So we have to make sure that we do the Lord's will, which is gonna make us automatically separate and different and transformed out of this world and this world's way of thinking and doing things. So we can't, if we have a shameless daughter, she wants to wear skimpy clothes. We have to, we can't say, okay, don't wear a micro mini, wear these super skin tight pants. No, we're supposed to remove them from this world's way of being. That they wear modest apparel, that they're not wearing pants or clothing booty shorts, that they're wearing, they're not wearing things that pertain to a man, that they're following the Lord's laws that are written there so we can apply them even in this wicked world in these last days. It says, keep a sure watch over a shameless daughter lest she make thee a laughing stock to thine enemies and a byword in the city and a reproach among the people and make thee a shame before the multitude. So if you don't watch over your daughter, like the scripture says, she's going to be with child in your house in, the, in a couple of verses above that we are reading. We, you're, if we don't do the right things, it won't be a mystery. Because a man shall be known in his children. A woman shall be known in her children. So ultimately, don't sit there and accuse your daughter because you, you found out that she's a prostitute or she's a call girl. Or she's a, a stripper and having sex on the side or all these things. Oh my goodness, we never raised her that way. Yeah, you gave her all the liberty in the world. What did you think she was going to do in a wicked world? If you didn't train her in the way that she should go. You're teaching her Christianity and Christmas, which is the way she shouldn't go. That's right back to the world that we're supposed to leave. So if that's what you're training her to be, what do you think is going to happen? Exactly what did. That's why even as adults, the Lord shows us that we have to repent. Yes, your intention may not have been to have a daughter that's pregnant or having multiple abortions or that would be raped by a, a relative you trust. Of course, most parents aren't sitting there. That's their goal. Yeah. But the Lord shows us that um, a wise man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. That's Proverbs 22 and 3, because if we don't understand these scriptures or understand the necessity to guide our children, not let this world form what they think is normal or let them do the parenting and decide what they're able to do or shouldn't do, bad things are going to happen. First of all, you're going to be sinning because the Lord commanded us to teach our children his commandments diligently all the time in the house. When we wake up, when we lie down, when we sit to eat, when we walk around, we're all supposed to speak of the Lord and, and his commandments and also discipline our children. Let them know why they're not supposed to do things. Even if you're going to spank your child, you do it with discipline. You don't do it violently or because you're frustrated and you want to be violent to them. You do it to instruct them, to, to bring discipline to them, to correct them, to let them know that they're not allowed to do what they want, that they must submit to your authority. And many people, by not knowing these things and following the world, oh, how to raise your children, you know, put them on time out. No, the Lord say, beat them on the sides, they shall not die. He that loveth his son causeth him oft to feel the rod. Let not thy soul spare for his crime. Um, thou shalt beat the child. And deliver his soul from hell. Again, hell means the grave. It means a, 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 an estate that's suffering up to the point of death. So that's Proverbs 23, verse 13 through 14. So again, when we deal with the Lord, it's not our way. It's not, okay, I believe this and I'll mix that with what the Lord says. No, it's only what the Lord says. Because Christianity is trying to, Christianity became into it, came into existence because man tried to mix what they felt with what the Lord says. So all of a sudden now, they left the Lord's commandments and the Lord's word and came with their own commandments. Whether it's Catholics and their Lent and their Easter with Easter bunnies laying eggs and all this other madness, it is going to inevitably perfectly follow Satan and deception and move away from the Lord, which is righteousness and truth and light. Um, let's get... Uh, Let's get a couple more scriptures. So we'll get uh, Proverbs 2 and then also 2 um, Peter's 1. Okay, so Proverbs 2 
in 2 Peter 1. Because again, when the scriptures show us about patience, an aspect of patience is temperance, is self-discipline, is self-control. Because many people don't understand that biblical patience is greater than just self-control. It's, it's following the Lord's commandments, no matter what the temptation, no matter what the trials. And also, part of the Lord's commandments is repentance. Because a lot of people, they constantly sin against the Lord, and then they try to make their sin as if it's something righteous. No, we have to, if, there's many things you're going to struggle with. We were made to be wicked. The Lord commands us to renew our minds and become a new creature, to become righteous. That's not natural. That's not, quote unquote, normal. And we're in a wicked world that tries to entice the wickedness in us, to bring it out. So that requires a sincere devotion to cleaning our, cleaning our minds and cleansing ourselves from the inside, not from the outside, like water baptism. That's why we have to turn to the Lord, because we won't be able to cleanse ourselves alone. We have to cleanse ourselves by his word. Like Christ said, now you are clean through the word which I speak unto you. When we apply the word like the disciples applied the word, not when we hear it and don't do it, not when we give explanation. Oh, no, I'm not going to follow the Old Testament because that was the law for the Jews. Well, first of all, not only are you guys the Jews and Israelites, you so-called blacks and so-called Hispanics and our scattered brothers and sisters. But also, we have to realize that by following the Lord, that's how we're truly cleansed. How can we be cleansed or purified or true if we're still doing the wickedness that Christ showed us not to do and died because we were doing it? How are we going to follow lying preachers and wicked men that come back and say the laws are done away with? Well, how are we that are dead to sin live in sin because Christ died. That makes no sense. Christ died because we were wicked. So now we're going to give, we're going to stay wicked because Christ already died. That makes no sense. Why would we continue in the things Christ had to die for if we really followed and loved the true Christ? The Christian Christ, yeah, you could do whatever you want. Nobody's perfect. Whenever you get to something, you don't want to change. But the true Christ shows us to battle through those things that these impossible challenges that we face are the things that we love so much. If we keep praying and fasting and offending less and battling, eventually we're going to give up those cigarettes that, is, that are addictive. Eventually we're going to give up those lusts. Eventually we're going to give up lying. Eventually we're going to do those things. And we're going to do many of those things sooner than later because we can't be true if we're lying. So yes, the battle of the thoughts might be difficult in certain aspects or certain lusts or certain different things, but how can I talk about truth if I'm a liar? That makes no sense. Lying to my mother, lying to women, lying to brothers, lying to men, teaching false doctrines of Christianity, which is also a lie. And then now I'm going to be bringing forth truth or I'm a Lord's servant. I'm not a Lord's servant yet. Wherefore, put away lying. You know, that's why we can't have a new mind if it's still lying. Um, so second Peters, um, let's get right to the point. Second Peters one and verse four. Okay. There's, there's many more scriptures, but when we look at the Lord showing us about the fruit of the spirit, one of them is temperance because again, we have to have self-control. If we don't have self-control, we're going to be emotional when we should be calm. We're going to speak when we should be quiet. We're going to ignore when we should hear. We're going to reject the word that we should listen to because it's different than what we've heard or been taught. So these are things that the scriptures help us to actually overcome. So this is 2 Peter 1.4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. So the more we learn about the scriptures, we see the patience is necessary because many of the blessings that we get, even if it's understanding, even if it's wisdom, it doesn't come right away. And especially the major blessings like the kingdom of heaven, the rewards, the blessing for being faithful to Christ and the heavenly father. Those don't come right away. So we have to have patience and wait. Sometimes we're going through trials that don't end with one prayer. We have to wait. We have to have patience and continue to pray and knowing that the Lord will hear us. 
and will help us to overcome this trial that's not one hour or one day or one month. Okay, and primarily, like the scriptures say, the great and precious promises are the having this earth in righteousness, the Lord giving a crown to them that endure temptation. Those things are not yet. So we're working towards that. So we that's, again, one of the major aspects of patience, that we, we, we look for a far more and exceeding eternal way to glory. We don't look for our reward here in America or here in this world. Or after a four-year degree, like, oh, now I've arrived. And we don't want a part of this wicked world. Even if we went to college, we our goals aren't tied to our rewards and goals are not tied to this wicked world, but Christ's world, which is not of this world. It says that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, being spiritual, because people want things now. They don't have patience. They want it now. That's why Satan can come to them with sin or prostitution or or being a pimp or wicked options because that's money now. That's that's get rich quick. That's hey, I can see I, I got the goal right here. I could get fifteen hundred dollars in three hours if I send this girl out. So you know, out to prostitute. So again, the Lord is showing us that by us having his patience, that we then will be might become partakers of the divine nature, the spiritual nature. Looking at things more in truth rather than what you can get now, what's right in front of you, what's what's attainable by just reaching out and grabbing it or doing it. It says, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So this world is corrupt because of the wicked desires. It's not only really referring to just sexual lust. That's just one aspect of lust. You have lust dealing with wanting to lie to people, deceive people, wanting to just earn money by sins. Anything sinful is also classified as lust. You know, if it's, 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 it's letting us know that the deceitfulness comes from sin. Okay. It says, and besides this, giving all diligence. So whenever serving the Lord, it deals with diligence. It doesn't mean going to church one day a week or calling yourself a Christian or wearing some cross. Now you're holy or going to some December 25th mass. That's not what makes us holy. That's never been serving the Lord. The Lord isn't that easy to serve because we have to serve the Lord from our thoughts, from our minds. We have to battle. We have to fight the good fight of faith. Serving the Lord is not just calling ourselves Christians or just calling ourselves uh, an Israelite group name or changing into a Hebrew name or knowing we're Israelites. That's not what makes us diligent. These are examples of things that show we have diligence. So it says, and besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith. So many people talk about, I believe in the Lord, where the just shall live by faith. We're reading in the Bible a commandment. And the commandment states that we're to add to our faith, showing you that faith is not just the only thing that we need. Even as important and great as faith is, and the works that will accompany faith. There's things we have to add to faith. There are things apart from faith that are vital and important. It says, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. So we, are, we have to apply the things that we learn, which will give us virtue. We have to apply the commandments that we learn, which gives us virtue. And not only that, we have to add to that virtue knowledge. So we have to always be increasing in knowledge. Like the scriptures say, um, a wise man is strong. Yeah, a man of knowledge increases strength. He's going to be fruitful. She's going to be fruitful. That, that's in Proverbs 24 and 5. Christ always spoke about being fruitful. And if we don't bear fruit, we're good for nothing. And that we're truly not joined to him when we read in John the 15th chapter. So when the scriptures speak about the fruit of the spirit or being fruitful or increasing in all good things, whenever the scriptures speak about that, it's referring to being fruitful in righteousness, being fruitful in faith, like always increasing. You don't say, I have faith and that's it. I've been saved 10 years. Well, what have you been? He didn't endure us to the end. The same shall be saved. Get that Christian lie out of your mind that you're saved because you were dunked in water. You go to some Christian church. It's the opposite. When you leave that church and you come to the Lord truly, you're putting yourself on the road or the way to learn how to save your soul, 
to grow and do the things that will prevent you from destroying yourself or being your own worst enemy. So it says, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance. So the more wisdom and knowledge that we get, the more we start to learn and apply the Bible, the more temperance and self-control we get. Like the Lord says, he lets us know that whoso can't, he that cannot rule the spirit is like a city that's broken down and without walls. Um, or Proverbs 25 and 28. So when we can't rule our spirit, so we're easily provoked. We have deep pain, but we don't deal with the people that brought us that pain. We don't deal with the molesting stepfather. We don't deal with the mom that kicked us out or gave us no hope. So the, the girl or the son ran away and went to worse predators or, or predators just like the mom that didn't give a damn about them or talk about they love like the mom does, but didn't show any love and works. Didn't show any true nurturing or true support or weren't there to protect the child that couldn't protect themselves. So these are the things that, like the Lord says, we have to learn temperance because we're in many difficult situations. And some of us, are, there were a lot of things that they need to be healed by Christ and by the word of truth, by praying, by really getting more spiritual and dealing with the things that they've never dealt with or never dealt with properly. The Lord is showing us that we have to have temperance to do that. Because sometimes people don't say anything to their vic the ones that victimize them. And then they might blow up or start throwing stuff around and the police call, you're not welcome back here. Don't come back here no more. And then now they remain the victim and then more pain because they have so much rage and then they don't know how to bring it out, what to do or how to be heard uh, to avoid those devils until they get stronger and then confront the evils of the past that were never resolved. Don't be around people that were evil to you, they, especially if they haven't repented or if they shut you down every time you try to bring out something. Those are You got Israelite groups that do that, that do wrong to brothers and sisters. They don't, they, you Make sure that you heal yourself. And then when you grow stronger, like the Lord said, a wise man is strong, a man of knowledge increases strength. The stronger and wiser that you get, if the Lord will, you may have a chance to talk to him. The Most High might take them off the earth for their sins that they might do to you and other people, biting and devouring brothers and sisters. But don't worry about them. That's between them and the Lord. And if they don't repent, they're not going to escape. You don't get to go to the Lord's uh, kingdom of heaven that's going to be here on earth with you breaking the second greatest commandment and justifying it. That's, that's what satanic wicked men did. That's the same Pharisees those wicked men of today try to say that are wicked and hypocrites and sinners and all that, they're more wicked than those Pharisees. They don't even know half of what those wicked Pharisees that didn't know anything knew. So again, make sure that as we're reading, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience. Because now faith brings forth patience. Okay? And it says, and to Patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's beautiful. Because that shows you that we have to abound, we have to grow, we have to increase. We have to increase every single day. And you see people from religions, even uh, Israelite religions, you see them stagnant. They're still teaching, you know, one scripture. Yes, Deuteronomy 28 is a powerful scripture, but there's a whole much, there's a whole Bible. Just like churches teach John 3.16, you have a lot of Israel only teach John 28.68. When in reality, we need to grow in the word. We need to grow in Christ first because we always had the Bible. We always had the curses we were warned against. Adam and, and Eve had the laws also. But what did we lack? The understanding of the Most High's laws and the understanding of his word, which Christ gave us. That's why he's known as the wisdom of God. The power of the Most High, the wisdom of the Most High, the wisdom of God. Why? Because Christ gave us the wisdom that even us reading the law, our minds were too carnal. And the law was too spiritual, so we couldn't grasp it enough to do it or to apply it the way the Most High wants us to apply it and commands us to apply it. 
Christ came in the flesh and in this same flesh as us, the Most High made him pure and righteous and sinless. And he was able to speak and do all the pureness that the Most High wants us to. So the Most High gave us a living example of what obeying his word and laws looks like and sounds like. Okay, so um, let's continue. It says, but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. So it says, wherefore the rather brethren, give diligence to make, make your, your calling and election sure. Let me read that again. Wherefore the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. So that's showing us that when we do um, knowledge, virtue, temperance, faith, when we always add these things and increase, we're going to abound in all good things. We're not going to be the family whose daughter is molested. We're not going to be the family whose who's notoriously child molesting uncle is the one that's, or cousin is the one coming around and babysitting or being the one in the house with six other kids and gets his choice of who to violate. But that's what happens in all our families every day in whatever country we're at. People, they act like that can't happen to them. They just don't want to think about that. Like, it, it, oh, that's so disgusting. It's more disgusting when your daughter is spinning around a pole with a broken soul. That's more disgusting. And it makes you the most disgusting of all because when you had a chance to prevent it, you didn't. You didn't keep a sure watch over your daughter like you were commanded. Like the Christian church didn't tell you the Lord still requires that of you. You ain't going to be able to tell him your preacher didn't teach you that because he never commanded you to be listening to preachers and to be following preachers of the Christian church. Let me be more specific. Or preachers in Israelite groups that they're so busy speaking against the white man who has done abominations and atrocities throughout the earth. But. He doesn't control the wickedness that we do because we were wicked when we were in our land, Israel, when he wasn't there. We were wicked in the wilderness when Caucasians and Edomites were not there. So we have to actually serve the Lord for the first time as a people or as the righteous remnant that the Lord is gathering now. And many of our people won't repent, but we have to make sure we repent. And the ones that also will repent, they'll hear the word of Christ through us. So again, brothers and sisters, make sure that you truly realize when the scriptures speak about, you know, patience, we endure all these trials. That's really the ultimate patience that we need. And we don't just endure. We endure keeping the Lord's commandments and having faith in Christ. That's the patience that the scriptures show us. And that also requires us to not give in to frustration, not give in to people not believing the word of truth. Or calling us wicked wicked, and calling us false names and liars and bad and evil. That's what they did to Christ himself and all his true servants, including the prophets. So we have to understand that the more that we follow righteousness, the more wicked people will assume or label us as. But the righteous won't be that way. And our job is to be righteous and continue to grow and repent for the things that we're not doing and constantly grow so that we can offend less and less and less till ultimately the Lord will help us to be perfect. OK, so um, again, there's there's many scriptures. There's James chapter one, verse two through four. Um, uh, Proverbs, the second chapter, the 10th verse through the 13th verse. Let's get that. OK, because um, I did quote it earlier. So let me just get that really quick and we'll just read through it. But it's one of it's a very powerful scripture and it's and it's for brothers and sisters, especially a sister that might be in a situation now where she might have a baby with a pimp and he threatened her family. A lot, a lot of people are in situations that are the most important situation, but that's the one thing they didn't never talk about. Or they try to act like they have a situation in control or they justify the wickedness that they're doing when in reality they're scared and they don't know what to do. And this is when the more understanding we have, we'll be able to help and reach brothers and sisters like that because it's not really us. It's the Lord in us or the Lord's wisdom that we're bringing to them that's going to help them and reach them in that part of their soul that nothing else has been able to touch or reach. So 
This is Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 10. It says, When wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. So when you hear this word of truth, when you hear the Lord's knowledge, which is the Bible only, not Christianity, not Israelite group doctrines, but the word of truth only, when you hear just the Lord's word and examine it for yourself and do it, what does the Lord say? Discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee. So when we truly start to learn this word and we start to perceive and understand it and then we start to do it, discretion, temperance is going to protect us. Not just going to run out to make the quick money anymore. We're not going to be short on the rent and start panicking. We're not going to make getting a college degree the most important goal in life, like most of our people do that don't have a degree or that have a degree. You can fail being a doctor. If we don't have the Lord, ain't nothing going to protect and save you. Having a doctor doesn't mean your kids are guaranteed a happy life because look at a lot of doctors and people. While they're working hard to make money and went to school for so many years to become a doctor, their children are drug addicts. Their children have issues and spirits that control their minds. So oh, schizophrenia, depression, um, being bipolar, all these things. So people don't escape the Lord even if he's not a priority to them. That's why we have to nurture, we have to nurture our children by these words because they're spiritual. And these different spirits and trials and temptations that exist all over this world and including in our households and among our family by us following the Lord we protect ourselves we like the scriptures say we lay a hedge about our wife we lay a hedge about our household that Lord is the protection he we abide under the shadow of the Almighty rather than making money be our protection or abiding under pleasing men or man's laws and then we're so worried about rendering on to Caesar and doing those things and, and being accepted by society or the places where we work or by the people that we feel can give us more money or more power that we don't render on to the Lord what's the Lord's and everything we have internally or otherwise, our family, our household falls. So that's why the Lord says, discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee. To deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaketh forward things who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness. So whether it's a man that's a pimp, an evil man, it, it, uh, a, a, a preacher that's teaching you Christianity, or an Israelite brother that, yeah, we're Israel. Yeah, that's true. That's right. Yeah, and by the way, you know, I'm the prophet Ezekiel. Or I'm Christ reborn. Or I'm the holy, I'm the comforter. Men speaking forward things in wickedness, they come with scriptures, but if you keep listening to them and don't give them, be hasty to give them credit as being righteous, you see that, hey, they're saying things that don't feel right or sound right. So because I don't know the Bible and I don't know right from wrong yet, I'm going to just give them space from me so I can come to the Lord directly and reason in the scriptures better and ask him to help me to discern and know good and evil and to learn his word because that's my true desire. That's what I treasure. That's my goal. To protect me and my family and have us survive this destruction and judgment day that I'm learning and I know is going to come. This is just like the time of Noah. When people were having big weddings, they had their whole future plan. We're going to have grandkids. We're going to have a whole happy life, a big house. That's exactly how people were living during the time of um, uh, Noah. Marrying and giving in marriage, that, that means you're planning for your future. That means that you're living life like there's no such thing as judgment day. That there was no such man as Noah speaking the Lord's word and preaching and warning the people to turn from their wicked ways. They act like that's the, that would, they act like that's reality is not including judgment day. Just like in Noah's time, they didn't believe in that. It had never rained before until the great flood. So again, by us actually learning the Bible, we see is prophesied in Matthew 24, verse 36 to 39, that as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. 
that the people didn't believe they didn't want to hear about the Bible. They already knew that stuff. They got their own opinions. They're going to live their own life. Don't judge me. They All the people had said the same thing until the day that Noah entered into the ark. That's when they all were knocking on the door. They wanted to hear it in. Too late. Judgment is now. The judgment will sit. It's it's already done. Same thing in these last days. When Christ comes, there's going to be a lot of people. Oh, I believe it now. He's a black man. Oh, I can see that. No, it's too late. And it's not just about Christ being a black man. It's about more importantly, us applying what he said and dealing in truth in everything, including his color, but mainly about repenting and acknowledging and forsaking our sins, which is true repentance, that we stop breaking the commandments and we start um, doing the Lord's words, all of them. And with that, we'll pause and all glory, honor and praises to our almighty and eternal heavenly father and our Messiah and salvation and Rabbi Jesus Christ. All praises and honor and glory to them forever and ever. Peace. Shalom.